406 District Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Oscar Hale Jr. presiding. All right, state ready? ready. Defense ready? Defense is ready. Okay, let's bring the jury in, please. All rise right, for the jury. And the state may proceed. Where is your witness? Speak close to the mic, uh, speak loud and clear so that the people in the courtroom can hear you. I will. Uh, I want to uh, begin this morning uh, by establishing what, what we know right now uh, based on your investigation and based on the interview and confession of uh, Juan David Ortiz. Okay? Okay. Uh, we know that uh, he did, in fact, um, pick up Erica. Correct. And that he knew Erica. Correct. And that he, he took Erica to her home. His home. After he picked her up on San Bernardo at a bus stop. Correct. And, in fact, in his confession, he corroborates certain statements that Erica made to you. Correct. As the but we're going to object to leading her on. Uh, what are some of the statements he corroborated that Erica had also made to you? That they went to his house, uh, that she was freaking out when they got to the house, that she vomited, uh, that they ended up at the gas station after that. And, and including the uh, brandishing of the gun? Including the altercation which led to her running to the trooper. Yes, sir. The difference there being that he says he showed her, he lifted the gun in the holster but she says he pointed the gun at her. Correct. But but uh, both of their statements were consistently the same. Correct, they were. Okay. And that he uh, that he took her to buy drugs? Correct. Even to the point where they smoked cigarettes? Correct. Okay. I also want you to... <clears throat> During this interview, uh, he speaks to you about uh, Claudine's murder. Yes, he does. Okay. Uh, based on your investigation, based on your memory, uh, what is it that he tells you about Claudine's murder? What he tells us about her is that he picks her up, and they have a conversation when they're in the car of how it'd be interesting, not verbatim, but it'd be interesting to go see where Melissa was killed. And while they're heading out there, that she starts freaking out and she accuses them that you're the one who did it. And you know, something happens in the car. So he ends up driving on FM 255, which is goes from 83 to 35. It's a, it's 
to farm to market road and he pulls over there she gets out of the car and he shoots her in the back of the head and uh, yesterday uh, we showed you some of the photos regarding her crime scene correct the crime scene knows that yes sir okay she she died at the hospital she died at the hospital yes sir not at the scene uh, during his confession, um, are you able to establish the murder weapon? A forty caliber pistol, yes, sir. Tell us more about that pistol. It's a forty caliber Smith and Wesson caliber. The pistol itself was an HK uh, government issued Border Patrol weapon. And uh, for which murders was it used? In which murders was it used? Melissa Ramirez, Claudia Induera, Wizard de Cantu, and Janelle Ortiz. What about the ammunition? Uh, were you able to establish through your interview and your investigation the ammunition in this case? By his account, he had not purchased 40 caliber ammunition. It's the ammunition they gave him at work. So it was a work issued ammo. And what date was uh, Claudine murdered? Excuse me? What date was Claudine murdered? The 13th murdered? of September, 2018. Where? On FM 255 in Webb County. Texas? Webb County, Texas, yes sir. Okay. And now, through, your, through the confession and through the investigation, I want you to talk about about the, the murder of Guiselda uh, Cantu. Okay. Um, he, according to his account, he picks her up. He says that she is someone he had not encountered before. Um, he says he picks her up and they start heading north on 35 eventually. They get off the highway and loop around to 255, back around the same area where the other crime scenes were. And he starts coming back southbound on 35, and he pulls under the 22 mile marker overpass, and he makes her get out of the car. And like I said, he says, he told her that San Antonio's in one direction, uh, by his account. He says San Antonio's in that direction, Laredo's in that direction, and he tells her to leave and he tells her that he plans on ending himself that night or finishing himself that night or something. And she starts telling him not to, that God loves him and stuff like that. He gets agitated, tells her to leave, and you'll see in the video where he eventually shoots her. He says he shoots her there. And he takes off back to Laredo. Okay. Up until now we have uh, three murders now, correct? Correct. How many casings are recovered from murder, the first crime scene of Melissa Ramirez? Three, sir. Three casings. How many casings have you recovered from, from Claudine Duera's? Two, I believe, sir. Two crime scenes, yes. five. And now at Griselda's, how many casings have been recovered? I recall three. So now we have a total of eight casings so far recovered. So far, yes, sir. All of these casings, Casings are 40 caliber. Same model? Make. Yes, 40 caliber Smith & Wesson okay. caliber uh, federal cartridge. Eventually, what are, happens to all these casings? Where do they go? Do they stay in your evidence room? Uh, no, they get sent off to the crime lab at the Department of Public Safety. Okay. And what do they do? They do an analysis on them. Okay. And they give you, and what's the purpose of the an analysis? To compare the to compare the, I guess, the characteristics of the primary strikes and of the ammunition we sent off. Okay. And, and they give you a report as to whether or not they're all from the same, Correct. same type? Yes. Okay. Or, or if, the, of the, if all the primers match as far as where the... Fired from the same weapon. Fired from the same weapon? Yes, sir. Okay. And was that done in this case? That was done, yes, sir. And what was the, was the, if you know, what were the findings? Objection, Your Honor, relevance and lack of personal knowledge. 
if he knows. It, he's a lead, well, he's a lead I'm investigator. I'm sorry, Your Honor, it's also hearsay for this officer. Okay, sustain it this time. Okay, I'm gonna approach. Have you also, uh, I'm gonna approach this lady. Ask you if you're familiar with the contents within these states exhibits 118 and 122. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. And they fairly and accurately depict uh, the scene that is uh, shown. Yes, sir. And are these part of as lead investigator? Are they part of your uh, investigation report? Yes, sir. They would. Be. Okay. What is it that the ladies and the jury are seeing here? That is the victim, Cantu. And tell us the time, date, and location. The time would have been approximately Friday, would have been Friday, Friday night, September 15th. 14th to 15th at night. And location? That's uh, under the underpass on 3522 mile marker. What are these orange circles that we see? The mm -hmm. shell casings that were recovered? fairly and accurately depict the, the scene and contents within that photo? Yes, sir. And are they part of your, your investigation report? Yes. Sir. Griselda, if you can describe uh, what, where they're located in this picture, in 128. Uh, she had a blunt force trauma to the head, and she had uh, gunshot wounds to the neck. So all of the injuries from the neck were from the neck up? All the injuries were from the neck up, yes. Establish uh, how did you find out about Guiselda's murder? A passerby called 911 Webb County Dispatch, and the passerby 
called 911 to advise that there was a body on the side of the road and uh, deputies went out to go check out the the body and when the deputy got there uh, he called me that's just when I was at the parking lot level of the Ava Hotel uh, looking for Mr. Ortiz and that's when they called me and they said hey no, we Hearsay. Well, you, you said so, suffice it to say you received a phone call. I received the phone call from Deputy Elisondo advising me there's another Probably scene. The hearsay, you want again. What? Okay. Let's uh, continue with the confession. Uh, does he, does Juan David Ortiz eventually volunteer information? Yes, he does. Tell the ladies and gentlemen what, if any, information he volunteers about another murder. He volunteered that he told us we there's one y'all haven't found, and y'all should probably send out someone to go check it out. We told him we would, and he said it's on 35 by the 15 mile marker where the gravel is. He said he's going to be right there on the side of the road and there was somebody there, exactly where he described it. approach him. Yeah. I'll show you what's marked. That states exhibit 24, 25, 26, 27, 29, Sorry, I'll say 28 and 29, just to keep them in order, and 30. Okay, I believe these have been conditionally uh, admitted. However, I'm going to ask you if you recognize the contents within these photos. Yes, sir, I do. And do they fairly and accurately depict the scene of the, in each photo? Yes, sir, they do. And are they part of your, as lead investigator, part of your investigation report in this case? Yes, they are. As to the murder of Janelle Ortiz? Yes.
oyster. Oh, sorry. I'm going to show you States Exhibit 30 once again. Where okay. is that photo? Where was that photo taken? The photo was taken at the crime scene. Okay. And uh, you had it previously on my list is murder crime scene one and described the function of the ME and what the ME does when they get there, right? They take possession of the, take custody of the body for autopsy and for mm -hmm. the medical examiner's purposes, yes, sir. And do they turn the body over? Yes. And what do they do after they turn the body over? They wrap it in a sheet, put it on but, a gurney, and take it. But before they, they turn the body over, what do they do? Oh, they inspect the body for any obvious signs of trauma. Okay, and they take photographs of the body? Yes. Um, and your crimes, and these are crime scene photos from that day at that location? Correct. And part of your report? Correct. The only manipulation, if there was any, was them turning over the body? That would have been known by the ME, but yes, sir. Okay. Now, do we move to admit? Yes, yes, exhibit 30 is admitted. Together with the other exhibit. Thank you. Thank you. You may publish. Thank you. Is this the, uh, tell us what we're looking at here. You're looking at the uh, access road, IH 35. Um, it's between the access road and the main highway, and uh, it's around the 15 mile marker, give or take. What is uh, significant about the, the mound of gravel there in the photo? Uh, for several years, there were large mounds of uh, gravel that belonged to TxDOT, and I think that's where they would store them. And they were there, they obscure the view from the highway. Okay, and was that, uh, did, Mr. did Mr. Ortiz make any mention of, of the gravel mound? I believe I believe he did when he <laughs> described where he left Chanel. He had pointed that as a as a landmark where her body was. I believe he did. Yes. Would you like to review the transcript to verify sure. that on the last murder? <laughs> the other side of the gravel mounds. Okay, so he, he's the one that tells you about the gravel mound. Yes, sir. Okay. And that's where, you, that's where law enforcement responds? That's where they responded, yes, sir. And again, up until this time, during the confession on September the 15th, 2018, in this room, do you know about Janelle or Ortiz being dead? We had no idea, no. Had any 911 calls come in about Janelle Ortiz or a body at the 15 mile marker? No, sir. Did any other agency provide any information about a body at the 15 mile marker on IH 35? No, sir. Who was the only one that provided you information as to the body of Janelle Ortiz? Mr. Ortiz. Can you make out the, the body in this picture? Yeah, it's blurry, but yes. It's off onto the left side of the road. How did the how did Mr. Ortiz describe the, the murder of Janelle? Um what stood out is that stood out for me for that description of his is that he thought that he might get a fight out of Janelle that of any of them, he thought he was going to get a fight, but that didn't put out a fight. He went willingly, walked out willingly, and he shot him in the back of the head. So Janelle knew she was going to be killed? It seems like it. How many casings were found at Janelle's crime scene? If I recall, one, sir. What are we looking at here? Close up of the previous picture. It's Exhibit 27. Do you remember how Janelle was dressed? 
had a hoodie on and shorts. That's correct. Like that. Exhibit 28. It's exhibit 29. What is this down here? I'd have to check the lock. I don't, it, most likely the shell casing, but I'd have to check the lock to be sure. Okay. The injury that, that Janelle sustained. Where was that injury located? In the head. That was one, one bullet to the head. Correct. Disc seven. He asked you to take the handcuffs off, correct? Yes, he did. Okay. You remember him telling you that he was paranoid like a motherfucker? Correct. Do you remember him telling you about Melissa that she was mouthing off? Yes, sir, I do. And that he said, fuck this bitch. Yes. And that's when it happened. Correct. Uh, during your interview, he says that he shot Melissa twice. Correct. And we heard yesterday where he says. Well, I object to his leaving, Your Honor. Does he say. Did you hear him say the monster comes out of me? Yes, I did. Did you hear him say that they are turds? Yes, sir. Did you hear him say that they are dirty? Yes. Did you hear him say, why doesn't anyone take these bitches out? Yes, sir. I'm object to leaving again. It's yes or no. If you yeah. uh, I'll allow that. That's overruled at this time. Did you hear him say during your interview, and we're going to see this seven, why doesn't anyone take out these bitches? Yes, sir. Did you hear him say during the interview, I grabbed it by the horns? Yes, I remember that, yes. Do you remember him also saying during an interview to one of his victims, asking him, you're probably the killer. Your Honor, I, we're going to object to continuous leading. This is direct examination. He can ask him what, when, where, how, why, as opposed to suggesting the answer to the witness. Overruled as to the question asked right now. We have the disc, and it's in evidence, and they're going to be play it for the jury. But do you remember him in the interview saying, I didn't want to do it, it's Erica? Yes, I remember that. Do you remember with Claudine's murder, him saying, with this one, there was no paranoia? Correct. And on page 41. In your interview, do you remember him saying, all the other bitches, I took them to 35 North? Yes. During his interview, does he tell you, I'll keep cleaning up the streets? I remember that, yes, sir. You remember him saying, at the 15 mile marker, I shot that one once. Correct. And on page 53, do you remember him saying, I'm like, fuck it, let's do it again. 
Yes, sir. I remember. I remember that. And do you remember in the conclusion of your interview him saying, "That's the whole story." Correct. Permission to continue the the video, Your Honor. Go page your one. Turds. They're so dirty. He said mierdas. Can you read? You didn't. You didn't uh, trans uh, read the transcript when he said mierdas. Like turds. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like prostituting on the street. Mm -hmm. Like why the fuck doesn't anybody take out these bitches? Like I was thinking to myself, the cops. Mm -hmm. So then I was all like, uh, Oh well, so these fucking bitches. bitches. Whatever, I go home. You know, cool. I go home. And then on uh, one of those nights, I picked up that old ass bitch that I had no idea what the fuck she is. I didn't even know her name. You all already know. The first one was not planned. Like, right, right. Through it, it was, and then after that, I, I saw it like, uh, it's not stupid, like, so I was like, you know, these, these people, uh, well, they're, they're not good people. So I convinced myself of that, and uh, I was very good at once. I picked up that stupid chick. That chick? And uh, it's a little bit tough now, stop. Buddy? That one? Yes, I got a bit in her room. Uh, okay, she lived in a hotel. You can start again. Oh, she was saying that she lived in a hotel and who knows what. Can you take me to the house? She was like, where? So we're driving uh, to a place that I've never been to with Erica before. It's in uh, Springfield. Uh, we're going to Springfield with a kind of uh, with a project for uh, project. You make a left, it's going to be the first right. You make another right, I found out. And there it is. Springfield? Okay. And you take so you guys hit the house, looks like that. So she bought her hair or whatever. And then, um, again, first, again, 35, and, and, and she brings up, hey, do you remember this guy? Like, yeah, I heard about that shit. I do, you know where that's at? Yeah, 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 and I told her, so we go, we're driving, and as we get to really pretty for your little fitness, that just starts really freaking out. No, dude, no, fuck that. No, dude, no, I don't want to go after all. No. What do you call it there? 255. Fuck that! You're probably together! You're probably together! You're probably together! Shut the fuck up! You're probably together! Get out of my car! She gets out! You're probably together! And that did? And everything was over. Now it was a little bit different. That was. 
need to do to do get out of the car she got out of the car. Oh, no, she got out of her car all on her own. I put it in the park. park. Okay. Yeah. Did she take all this stuff out with her or what? Okay, was it? Was no, it? No, no, she, she had her, I think she had her purse. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and how did you, when well, you did it, did you went through the passenger side or did you get out of the truck? I got out of the truck. You got out of the truck? Did, did she see it coming or she didn't see it coming? How many times did you get shot? I didn't get shot three times. Yeah. But if you get the same shoes that I had on mine, I probably missed. Sure. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Right? Wow. Yeah. Well, she was talking to me. Uh, Fucking shit. Um, and then you got to knock it out. Um, did you get the, did that start feeling different? Yeah. Like, uh, okay, you didn't feel like the first time? No, I'm not the Okay, I get a lot of You want to chip for chip? No, I don't want to go. Yeah, do you want to go? Yeah, do you So I went home. Mm-hmm. The, uh, that was it. This one was nothing like. Nothing right of anything that had happened. Oh, I'm 
right here. I'm feeling very pissed off. I'm drinking beer. I'm like, fuck this guy. They're gonna come down on me in a bit. I grab my 9 mil, I grab my 40 cups, start loading them. I grab my AR 15, start fucking loading them. I grab my toll gate, and I'm no, I couldn't find my toll gate. I was like, where the fuck's my toll gate? And I'm like, these motherfuckers are gonna come. Motherfuckers are gonna come. Uh, and the way it came, dude, I was in the house for a long time. So I was like, I stood there thinking, this bitch is not going to say anything. What the fuck is this bitch going to say? So, I thought I had taken my night note, but it's not in my truck. I guess I left it in my house. It's uh, 40, 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 it's uh, Remember I told you why the tourists got out? Right. Like, you know what? They're ready to come after me. Why don't I just keep cleaning up the streets? It sounds just like this fuck. Okay. Then we keep cleaning up the streets, picking up, and picking up the other guys. Said that are not worth it. Something I picked up over the chest that I never. This time I did okay. I didn't know her name. She was on her name. The one you guys are saying you guys found her last night. Yeah. Um. So, picked her up. Uh. Yeah, I feel the same thing. Yeah. 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 Ye
non ci sei. E non ci sei stato più nella pelle. I'm telling you to walk away, but you're not listening to me. I'm 
in by the door. Sorry, don't be. It was there to make it up in the first one. Yeah. Got out of hand and 
you know, you're explaining yourself, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Sure. We'll get that from here. We'll get some meat. Um, we'll get a process and stuff, and then uh, just have someone sit here with you for a while. I'm not going to put you back on. Thank you. Shall I come in? For real. Thank you. Sure. And I'm going to find out about that stuff. I'll look it up. I'll send you the paperwork to wherever you are, and you can look it up. And, and I'm going to talk to the sheriff so you can let you take that photo with you, okay? Thank you. I really appreciate it. Captain, yes, there's discussions in this uh, disc seven where uh, he tells you what he did after Erica escaped and he went to his house, right? Correct. And remind, uh, refresh the jury's memory, what did he say he did at his house? He loaded up the weapons he had at his house and he waited for law enforcement to show up and he was ready for a confrontation or he was ready to ambush the law enforcement that showed up. Did you eventually gain entry into his home? Yes. Now, several times uh, during this uh, interview, did he give you consent to enter his home? Yes. Um, however, did you obtain a warrant in this, in this Correct. case? Correct. A warrant was obtained. To enter the home? Correct. And did you personally enter the home? I went, yes. Okay. When did you enter the home? That was Saturday afternoon. So it would have been after you were tr finished with this interview? Yes. Sometime <laughs> after, yes. So that, you, that afternoon. Okay. And you executed a search warrant at his house? Correct. May I approach the witness room? Yes, sir. I'm going to show you what I marked as state's exhibit. And, and these, I think, were, were conditionally um, entered, but uh, it's state's exhibit 136, mm -hmm. 137. Turn them over. Yes, I'm going to show you States Exhibit 138. Yes, sir. States Exhibit 139. Yes, sir. States Exhibit 140. Yes, sir. States Exhibit 141. Yes, sir. States Exhibit 142. Yes, sir. States uh, Exhibit 143. Yeah, yes, sir. And State's Exhibit 144. Yes, sir. Okay. Do those exhibits that I've, I've shown you, do they fairly and accurately depict uh, what's within the photo? Yes, sir. And yes. these were taken uh, at the time that you entered the, the home on the search warrant on September the 15th of 2018? That is correct, sir, yes. Okay.
These exhibits 136 through 144 are admitted into evidence, and yes, you may publish. Now, Ortiz had told you what, what he had done, right, and the weapons that he had put out at his home. He said he loaded up his 9mm and his AR-15 uh, to wait for law enforcement or to wait for us to show up. And what do we see in, in this photo? We see uh, some Bud Light can and a 9mm pistol. I'll show you 137. A different, different angle, angle of the same pistol. And where is this pistol located in the home? When you walk in to the right on the kitchen island. Okay. Is it where he told you it was going to be? Pretty much, yes. What else did he tell you was on the kitchen island? An AR-15. I'll show you state exhibit 138. And uh, what is this? That is an AR-15 type rifle. And what is this? That is a high capacity magazine. And was that magazine loaded? Yes it was. <coughs> what are we looking at 139? His garage. He had a little, not little, but he had a little collection of ammo, a collection of ammunition there. He said in the confession he was looking for his shotgun? Correct. He said it was somewhere in the garage. Okay. You know what this kind of ammo this is? Those are shotgun shells. Shotgun shells. Also shotgun shells. And the Soviet States Exhibit 140. I can't see that picture. On my screen I can't. You don't, you just, up there. Okay. That's uh, the rack in his uh, garage. Okay. Is that the open gun case? That's an open, open gun, gun case. I'll show you the features at 141. That's handgun ammunition. What kind is it? Federal cartridge. You know the caliber? 40 caliber. If you know, is it is it similar to the ammunition that was uh, in his in in the vehicle, the gun found in his vehicle? Yes, that's what he gets issued at work. So this is government issued ammunition. Correct. They put it in a silver box and a white box. 142. What is this? That is ammunition. That doesn't look like the 40 caliber ammunition, though. So ammunition, but different caliber. Correct. Okay. I'm going to show you State's Exhibit 143. You know what this is over here? Yeah, I had seen that when I walked in. It did his taser, and it was on top of the fridge. Okay. His work taser. And what did you do with all, all the weapons that were found in, in his house? The whatever was found there was collected by the evidence techs, our CSIs, and taken back to the station. And based on your investigation, were any of those weapons found used in any of the murders? I don't believe so. Okay. Yeah. We have 39 more minutes on this.
you want to coke or fried butter pepper and coke? Coke. Okay. Any no onions, 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 Push on the market. Push on it.
Yes, sir. Just for the record, uh, so that's the end of uh, that this, disc. That is the end of this seven. That is the end of disc seven. It's a little dark, but can uh, what what part of the house uh, was this taken in? One of the restrooms. Okay. And uh, can you make this out over here? The towel? Correct. Mm -hmm. There was uh, in his confession and also in Miss Erica's statement to you, there was uh, information regarding her taking a bath. A shower. A shower. Yeah. Yes, sir. And, and what was the context of that? When they got to his house. He wanted her to take a shower. Correct. Before they had sex. Correct. I want to show you States Exhibit uh, 31 and 32. These were taken on September the. What date were they taken on? That would have been on Saturday. The 15th. Correct. Are you familiar with those two photos? Yes, I've seen them before. They're related to the other photos that I previously shown, showed you? They're from the same crime scene, yes, sir. Okay, and they fairly and accurately depict uh, what's contained within those photos? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Yes. Captain Calderon, with regards to exhibit. Your mic, Jeff, uh, oh, Captain Calderon. Yes, sir. Uh, with regards to states exhibit 31 and 32, uh, were you out there at the scene when these were taken? No, sir. So uh, you can't testify from your personal knowledge that these uh, truly and accurately reflect what they're purported to reflect, correct? They're the pictures from the crime scene that we're giving. What I'm asking you. Sorry? I'm asking you, were you there? Do you have to? I was not there, no, sir. Uh, we have checked you on it. Just a minute, I didn't catch the last question. That's he, not what I'm asking you, and so sorry. Do you have personal knowledge of the contents herein? Personal knowledge, were you there? No, I was not there. 
a lack of personal knowledge on the object. Yeah. Well, they've been conditionally admitted, so you still can't publish them. Okay, so conditionally admitted. They were previously. Okay, okay. No problem. We'll, we'll, not, we'll not bring the other witness. Sure. I can have a second, Your Honor. Time. Captain Calderon, um, how long have you been a law enforcement officer, sir? Since 2005, sir. Okay, so uh, 17 years approximately. Yes? Almost 18 years. Okay, and, and all those years uh, have they been with the Webb County Sheriff's Office? That is correct. And I gather you attended the uh, training academy? Correct. Uh, when you first became a law enforcement officer? In 2004, correct. And, and what kind of training do you receive out of curiosity? Uh, and that at that time it was a basic peace officer school. Okay. Uh, Penal code, <coughs> traffic code, uh, firearms, sure. uh, police tactics. The penal code and the like, right? Correct. Okay. And, and as time passes, do you get continuing law enforcement education? Yes, I do, sir. Okay. And how long have you been a captain? Since approximately 2015. Okay. Uh, now, is, is part of your training uh, uh, report writing? Yes, sir. And uh, the purpose of report writing, uh, an officer's duty to, or obligation, whatever, to write a report is to memorialize the events as they're happening. Would you agree with that? I agree. And basically it's to put your memory to paper. You agree with that? I agree. Okay. And uh, obviously in, in 18 years of uh, law enforcement, I imagine you've written a lot of reports. Correct. Okay. Now, uh, may I post the witness, Your Honor? Yes. show you, Captain Calderon, what's been marked as Defendant's Exhibit Number 2 for identification purposes only right now, but is that your report in this case? Correct. Uh, and, and maybe I'm wrong, but uh, are there other uh, reports that you have written other than this? No, this no? is the supplement I wrote. Okay. And in addition, uh, I've noticed that during your testimony, you've been referring, the transcript is obvious, right, but to other items to refresh your memory. It, Yes. Is that correct? Yes. And is that this notebook here? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, we'd ask to review the notebook uh, that he's been using to refresh his memory. You Thank may. You. you may. I need to very back at something personal, though. Can I keep it? Oh, yeah. If it's personal, as long as it's not official, we can keep it. Yes. Thank you, Captain. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with what's called a prosecution guide? No. Okay. Uh, well, let me ask you this. In this case, uh, who was the lead investigator? It was Ranger Salinas and I. We were joint investigators. Okay. We had different duties, different tasks. So, and you're with the Webb County Sheriff's Office, obviously. Correct. And Ranger E.J. Salinas <coughs> is with the... Texas Department of Public Safety, the Texas Ranger Division, correct? That is correct, yes, sir. And um, as in any other matter, uh, who, who would the buck stop with in this investigation, with you or with him? It's not that, it's not a, the answer is not that easy. It's okay. a joint investigation, sir. So, so nobody was ultimately entirely responsible and in charge of this investigation? No one individual is what I'm asking. No one person was in charge of everything? No, sir. Okay. And uh, 
getting back to a prosecution guide, uh, you know, if I might just say, that's where a lead investigator is putting his memory down uh, on paper uh, when he directed somebody to do something, when he spoke with somebody, who came in and gave him this, where he went and at what time and at what day and the like. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's a comprehensive uh, report by a lead investigator that summarizes uh, the entirety of an investigation. Are you familiar with that? I understand what you're getting at, yes sir. Okay, and uh, in this instance, this is the investigation of four murders and, and the aggravated assault and the uh, uh, evading and the like. And uh, your testimony is that you wrote a totality of one, two, three, four pages. Is Correct. that your testimony? If you look at my report, yes, that's my testimony, okay. yes, sir. And, uh, and as a matter of fact, your report begins recounting events uh, beginning on September 14th. Do, do you need to look at it to refresh your memory? Of course, yeah. Yeah, because I, I took sure. the other items you were using. May I put one? You may. If I may. Yes, sir. Uh, th does it begin recounting events uh, from September the 13th? Correct. Okay, and so, if, uh, so your report does not even begin from recounting the events of September the third. Yes. No. I, I see that. Okay. But but with with regards to specifics, you the start specific, recounting the events. Specific date I put was September fourteenth. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and so. If I were to ask you, for example, uh, who was the uh, first officer that responded on September the 3rd uh, to uh, Melissa Ramirez's murder? I believe that was Horacio Seguirre. Okay. And so if I were to ask you, um, I believe it was. If I could look at my binder, I'd be able to tell you specifically. Um, now, if I were to ask you, what <coughs> did uh, Deputy Horacio Izaguerre see when he arrived at the scene? Um, you, from your own report, you would not be able to tell us uh, <coughs> what he told you or what he saw when he arrived in the light. Would you? From your own personal memory. Is that a yes or no or can I explain? Well, let me, let me rephrase it. Okay. Uh, if you wanted to know the events that happened back on September the 3rd of 2018 and you wanted to refresh your memory, would you have a report to do that of your own? No, I'd pull up his. Okay. So you would have to refer to uh, Deputy Izaguirre's uh, report in order to refresh your memory from his memory. It gets added to my report, but yes. Okay. And uh, from your personal knowledge, uh, because I guess we didn't hear from Officer Izaguirre or we haven't, do you know if, if he stepped on a case and if he moved the body, if he... Uh, put tape around. Do you, what do you know about that? Your personal knowledge. All of that speculation on behalf of. Sustain us. Well, I guess you made my point. It, rephrase it. Yes. So, so, so my point is, <coughs> you didn't write any reports that you can refresh your memory from. Uh, on, 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 from September the third of twenty eighteen. Is that a yes or no, or can I explain? No, is it, did you write a report from the events of September the 3rd, 2018? Or the report I wrote is what you have there. Okay. And
And if I were to tell you that the totality of your report with regard to September the 3rd of 2018 is Captain Federico Calderon was assigned to the case involving the murder of Melissa Ramirez and Claudine Luera, Griselda Hernandez, and Humberto Ortiz. That's the total, the totality of what I can read regarding September the 3rd, 2018, that you put to paper. Did I put to paper? Yes. Yes. Okay. Hey, may I return this? Yes. Yes, sir. Now, if, if we go now to uh, September the 13th, with this, if I ask you the same questions, the same applies. You did not write an individual report yourself of the events of September the 13th of 2018. Yes or no? Yes or no? No. Okay. Um, and and just I'm trying to figure out your, your routine and habit. So is it your routine and habit to to, to write just a, a brief brief summary when you're the lead investigator of a case? No, it's not. Okay, but in this case, that's what happened. If you look on the top left of the sheet, yes, sir. It says supplement to Texas Ranger report, and the Texas Ranger was the one who did the primary report and that is my supplement to his report to include. So he wrote the primary report. That's why it says supplementary report on it. May I have a minute, Your Honor? Now, it, it, with regards to September the 3rd of 2018, uh, regarding uh, Melissa mm -hmm. Ramirez, and then also uh, the second uh, case of Claudine Luera, uh, you, you went to those crime scenes, correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, but you relied on the reports of other individuals. For example, a witness, uh, let's say the first person that discovered uh, uh, or called in 911. Okay. Uh, you did not write a report I spoke to or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The patrolman did. Okay. Uh, with regards to uh, Melissa Ramirez's uh, uh, murder and case, uh, you all had a suspect in that case, right? Yes. Okay. And uh, because a, a vehicle was reported uh, at the scene of the crime in close proximity and in close in time, correct? You're correct. And uh, in, in that situation, the suspect just turned out, happens to be a Laredo Police Department officer, correct? That is correct, sir. And Laredo Police Department officers happen to carry 40 caliber firearms, correct? Incorrect. Okay. What, what do they carry, nines? Right now they carry nine millimeter. Before they used to carry 45. Okay. Now, with regards to the, uh, the in interrogation uh, Mr. Ortiz, what training do you have uh, in interrogation techniques? I've attended a few inter interview and interrogation classes, um, some as part of my continuing education, okay. and I've read some books. And, and, in, and in your career, uh, how many interrogations do you believe you've uh, conducted? I wouldn't be able to put a number on it, but it's a lot. Okay. And so you would agree with me that generally speaking, what happens in an interrogation room 
generally on your part, based on your training and your experience, it's not by accident. There, there's technique, there's, there's rhyme to it, correct? Sometimes, yes. Okay. Uh, now, in, in this instance, uh, the substation is what, at 7209 East Saunders? It's right outside the city limit to Laredo, yes, sir. Okay. And uh, even though it's kind of a, maybe obvious from the video camera, but is, is this a, a, a room that has windows, for example? That room does not have windows, no. Okay. And um, clearly Mr. Ortiz was in custody at the time? Correct. When... Uh, when you took Mr. Ortiz in there, uh, did you, or to your knowledge, did anyone advise him that he was going to be video and audio taped? No. Okay. And uh, the videotaping and audio taping, uh, obviously we can't tell from our view, but from a person uh, in that room, it would not be obvious to that individual there, there is a video and audio recording equipment there, correct? Mm, there is a camera on the corner, and then there is the camera that you see. Okay. But there's a, another camera there that doesn't turn on, but there's a camera there, so. Well, I guess it's, if, if I walked in there, would I see a tripod with a camera on there? A tripod, no. You'd see like a wall-mounted something. And is that the one that's recording this? or no. is Okay. So the one that is recording this is... Uh, uh, hidden, if you will. Yes. Okay, it's either in a clock or a lamp or something, but something it's like hidden. Something like that, correct. And it's not hidden by accident, it's hidden by design. That's the way they sell it, yes. Okay. No, I mean, but, but, but what I'm saying is, by design, uh, you don't want the individual to necessarily know he's being video and audio recorded. That's not by accident, it's by design. I would say it's more, so it's not a distraction. I think most people know they're being recorded when they go in there. Well, do you know from your personal knowledge whether Mr. Ortiz knew? No, I don't. Okay. And, and, and you didn't bother to tell him, hey, by the way, when we walk in here, you're going to be video and audio recording. I didn't tell him, no. And you didn't tell him because you forgot to tell him. You didn't tell him because it's by design. I did not forget to tell him, no. Okay. So you intentionally did not tell him. I'm going to subject to the relevancy of Placing a requirement of advising a camera that's not required on the response. Well, Your Honor, I'm trying to uh, establish for the jury that everything that happens in this interrogation room is by design. Nothing is by accident. I think you can move on to the next one. Okay, Your Honor, I'll move on. Um, now, if, if um, and, and you know, the, the video is the best evidence, okay? So we, we know that. But we do have this transcript. But if, if I were to tell you that when you all walk in at the very beginning and it's 321 with 29 seconds approximately, that the first, one of the first questions that Ranger Salinas, this, and if you want to follow up with me, it's on, on this one and then page nine. Okay. Okay. Um, on page nine, uh, line eleven, uh, uh, Ranger Salinas says, "Okay, uh, look, you know there's always two sides to every story. Everybody has problems, you know. So, um, um, and you know that you're you're in custody right now. Uh huh." Okay, are you waiting, willing to tell us your side of the story as far as what happened, or, and Mr. Ortiz answers no. Okay. So, so he asked him literally, in, in other words, do you want to give a statement? And he says no. Do you see that? I see what you're saying, yes. Okay, and so uh, You did not take that as him invoking his right, Fifth Amendment right. Do you see that he's invoking his Fifth Amendment right to remain silent? No, I don't see that. Okay. So, so what you and law enforcement require is, is, it, is it, look, I, I invoke my Fifth Amendment right to remain silent. Is that what's required? No, sir. So if a guy says, no, I don't want to talk, that's not good enough for you? 
in this case, I didn't take it as him invoking his Fifth Amendment right. So if I, if I go up to you and say, hey, do you want to talk to me? You say, no. No doesn't mean no? It depends on the circumstance. You're making a generalization. In this, in this instance, I didn't take it as a no. Okay. Because you chose to not take it as a no, even though it's a no. Do you see the dilemma? No. What, what I'm suggesting to you is, and you can agree with me or not, okay. that it's very simple. No means no. You're choosing to not accept the no as a no. Do you agree with that? I don't agree with that. Okay. Now, <coughs> now at some point, uh, and I believe it's, and, and again, I know it's a joint investigation, and I guess Mr. S uh, Ranger Salinas will testify later, but uh, you start reading, reading his rights, correct? Uh, Mr. Salinas does, yes. Okay. Now, uh, when they're reading his rights, you go through uh, all the rights uh, that, that, you, that the form has, right? Correct. May I approach the witness, Your Honor? Yes, sir. going to show you what's been marked for identification purposes only right now is defendant's exhibit number three. Yes. Do you recognize that document? That's my signature, yes sir. Okay. And um, in this uh, transcript, uh, Agent Salinas reads them the rights. Okay. Yes sir. And uh, he reads all these rights, correct? Correct. And then at the end, though, he asks them, do you understand your rights? Correct. Okay. Uh, do you see where not in the form and not here, does he say, do you waive your rights? And you knowingly, intentionally, and voluntarily waive these rights stated in this document? Okay. At that point, he's reading them to them. But what I'm suggesting to you is he asks them, do you understand them? Yes. Okay. Do you understand them? But he doesn't say, do you in fact weigh them? You see how he's, he doesn't ask him that. It's right there. No, but did he ask him that? It's in the transcript. No, that's not my question. Okay, I'm confused then. Okay. It says that prior to and during the making of this, that you knowingly, yes. intelligently, and no voluntarily waive the rights set out in this document. Yes. But he doesn't say, do you in fact weigh them? He doesn't do that. Does he repeat the question to him and ask him again? No. Okay. Are you aware that uh, out when uh, Mr. Ortiz was being arrested, that Noe Gonzalez either attempted, you know Deputy Noe Gonzalez? Yes, I know okay. him. That he had either attempted or asked if he could read him his rights, read Ortiz's rights. Are you aware of that? I'm aware. And uh, someone stopped them from doing that. Do you know who that was? That would have been uh, Lieutenant Nunez probably. Okay. A and uh, so you normally would not read someone their rights when they're being arrested? Rights get read to you before you get questioned. Okay. But now when you're getting arrested, so if you say anything, you know, in between, too bad or something like that? Our deputies are instructed not to ask anything pertinent to the case mm -hmm. in general, and this is not specific to his case. They reserve that for the investigator, other than biographical name, date, you know, information that they're going to need. But questioning is done by the investigators, and if a deputy has to question him uh, pertinent to the case, then they'll read him their rights. But they're but aware of that. Okay, but also not reading their rights is by design also. 
It's not by accident. It's so that I can witness the reading of the rights and be able to tell you, yes, his rights were read to him. I was there okay, as so an not, investigator. Would you agree with me that not everybody, everybody goes into an interrogation room. You arrest a guy for resisting arrest. You don't take him to an interrogation room, correct? Correct. Normally, they go straight to jail and they don't get questioned. Okay. And so, so what we're saying here is that even though Deputy Noe Gonzalez uh, attempted or wanted to read him his rights, he was deliberately stopped. In this instance, correct? Yeah, he should not have read him his rights. Correct. Okay, that was our job. Okay, now um, we know that uh, when you began speaking to Mr. Ortiz, uh, fairly soon uh, he tells you about his education. Correct. Correct. Uh, so we know that, that Mr. Ortiz has a master's degree and he has a, a bachelor's degree and an associate's degree, correct? Correct. Uh, we know that he was in the targeted enforcement unit with the Border Patrol. Correct. And that he's in the, he also was in the big, the Border Intelligence uh, Center, correct? Yes, sir. And he also let you know that uh, he did eight years of active duty for his country. Yes, sir. And uh, he was honorably discharged. Correct. Now, uh, you're not a medical doctor or a psychologist or a psychiatrist, correct? No, sir. Okay. Now, he informs you um, that uh, he's been diagnosed with uh, PTSD, correct? Correct. Okay. And uh, anxiety and depression insomnia, uh, and migraines. Did he inform you of that? He mentioned those, yes, okay. sir. And he also, in particular, mentioned to you the, the numerous pills that this do Dr. Shankar uh, had placed him on, correct? He did mention that, yes, sir. And he said that uh, something along the lines that uh, even the interview, I mean, I'm sorry, the examination was over Zoom or whatever video conferencing. Is that correct? I don't remember, but I don't okay. have any reason to doubt it. Um, now, he also tells you that uh, that as soon as he started taking these pills, uh, and and he was drinking also, that his life went to shit. Basically, is what he tells you. He did say that, yes. Okay. And uh, on this date, I, I guess you would assume that he's still taking those pills and he told you he was also still drinking. Is that accurate? The drinking part, yes. The pills, I don't know. Okay. And uh, did, did you see that you had in front of you uh, potentially a uh, mentally unstable person? Not necessarily. Okay. But regardless of the fact that he tells you that uh, he's suffering all these ailments mentally, uh, you still uh, choose to insist and persist in continuing the interrogation? The interview, yes, sir. Okay. Um, he also told you he went to about uh, 40 uh, uh, appointments in this, in, from February of 18 to September of 18. I do remember that, yes, sir. And if you refer to page uh, 23 on this one, okay, sir. Uh, towards the bottom of that page of page 23, uh, Mr. Ortiz says, "I'm fucking out of it," and then I just went to shit after that. Uh, Do you see that? Okay. Please. Uh, and then uh, Agent Salina says, physically, emotionally? And he says, no, mentally. Okay. Okay. So he's telling you that he's mentally not well, right? It's a matter of opinion, but... No, I, I know it's a matter of opinion, but at least he's verbalizing that. He verbalized he, it, yes. Okay. Um,
and he tells you all, uh, just generally speaking, again, the video will speak for itself, like, uh, I'm not good. I don't feel well. He's saying all these things to you during the interview, correct? He may have. I don't remember that okay. verbatim, but he may have. Uh, and even uh, mm -hmm. um, Agent Salina says, are you, are you losing control or something? And he says, yes. Uh, it, and I'm just getting to the point that he's verbalizing to you that he's mentally not well. Do you see that? I see what you're saying. I disagree, but I see what you're saying. Fair enough. He also tells you that, uh, uh, and I'm on page 30 of this one. Yes, sir. That, uh, just generally speaking, from the day I was born until February of this year, I was a squared away bastard. And from February until now, and 40 fucking appointments, and look at me. Uh, do you see that? Yeah, I see that, sir, yes. And he tells you on page 31, uh, that he has loss of control. Uh, yeah, line 22, page 31, line 22. That he has loss of control. Oh, I see what you mean. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, now, on page 32, and I know we're right around 3.40 in the morning, uh, you mentioned the gun. Page what page? Sir? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. On page 32 of 32. this number one. Okay. We're in the same page still. But what I was saying, I was looking at the time. It's around 3:40 in the morning. Yes, sir. You brought him in, and the interrogation began at 2:30, right? Around there, yes, sir. So this is approximately an hour later. Okay. Uh, you already mentioned the gun in the truck in in his uh, white Dodge, correct? Okay. I'm just making sure. I'm just. Uh, we'll get back to that later. But I'm just okay. making sure that within the hour, you're already mentioning the gun. Is that accurate? Yes. Now he is cooperative. He tells you. He gives you consent uh, to search his house. Right. That's. Uh, I'm just going over all. Uh, Correct. This one. Uh, Uh, later on, he tells you he takes eight pills per day. I remember that. Okay. And then uh, um, at some point, it was mentioned that uh, Ranger Salinas mentions uh, blackouts. Do you recall that? Yes, I do. Okay. And uh, well, he says that he suffers from blackouts, right? Correct. Now, prior to anyone mentioning blackouts, I mean, throughout the beginning of this interview, and I guess we're about an hour in, he's been mentioning to you that he's not mentally well, right? He says that. Okay. And so, blackouts conceivably could be part of not being mentally well. Objection and speculation. Well, that sustained at this time. In other words, the, the blackout thing did not come out of thin air is what I'm saying. It was brought up by Agent Salinas, yes. Okay. Now, we're still in this one, but he does tell you that um, he's mixing tallies, which is referring to tall boys, I would imagine, with the pills, correct? Correct. Now, he was a supervisor with the with the big, correct? That was my understanding, yes, sir. At some point uh, on this too, he mentions to you that the blackouts occur when he drinks and uh, and takes the pills. Correct.
Now, at, during the videotaping, just generally speaking, at times you were leaving him there by himself for extended periods of time. Mm -hmm. uh, is that a yes? That's correct. Okay. And, and uh, it, it's a common tactic uh, in interrogations to leave uh, uh, individuals by themselves. Correct? In this case, it wasn't. And it is sometimes in this case, it wasn't. Well, you want to review on the monitors, right? When I would leave, I would actually go do something. I'd go look something up or we'd discuss something, discuss how we're going to approach the next interview. Um, I don't think I went to the monitor room too many times. Um, now, at some point, it, and now I'm on this three, just generally speaking, he does start talking about checking out, which basically is talking about suicide. Correct. He starts saying he's a disgrace. Yes. He says he's disgraced himself and in the military and the like. Correct. And, and at some point he tells you that, uh, you know, one of the reasons he went to the VA, because he hadn't, I mean, he'd been out of the military for a while. But one of the reasons he went to the VA is because uh, he didn't have a primary care doctor in Laredo. Yes, sir. I that? remember that, yeah. Uh, he had a primary care doctor, it appears, in San Antonio, but not in Laredo. Uh, and that he couldn't get in with any primary care doctor in Laredo at the time. Do you recall that? I recall that, yes, sir. And he again mentions that, that the VA immediately put him on all this, uh, he says, fucking medicines and my life turned to shit. I remember that. Okay. Now he does talk about feeling paranoid that he can't sleep and he checks the locks uh, a lot. He thinks that maybe people are plotting against him. Do you remember that too? <coughs> I remember the lock part, yes. And he says it started uh, when he started taking those pills. Recall that? I recall. So, so it appears that uh, this event with the VA uh, unraveled his life. I mean, when I say that, I mean after uh, going to the VA, his, his statements to you or that his life became unraveled. His statements to me? Yes, sir. Or that, yes. Okay. And uh, he tells you uh, that he has nothing in his background about this before going to the VA, right? That's what he said. Okay. And uh, he mentions the medications, uh, different names that I guess most of us are not familiar with. Uh, were you familiar with the medications he was taking? Some of them, not all of them. And they even put him on some sort of a seizure medication. Do you recall that? Um, if you can tell me the name of the one, I can. There's so many names here. To be honest with you, I'm not too sure which one. But I do you recall that he mentioned something, mentioned about, something about that? Yeah. And uh, and then he goes on to relate to you his experiences in Iraq. Uh, he was a medic with the, I think the first marine unit or something like that. Is that, do you recall something like that? I believe he said he was a Navy corpsman uh, Navy attached corpsman. to the Marine Corps. Yeah, and uh, apparently, uh, you know, it was during the invasion of Iraq. Correct. And he saw today. some pretty, uh, you know, disturbing things over there. That's what he said. Now at this point, you don't have any reason to doubt that, do you? No, sir. And he talks about seeing burned people and, you know, knowing about triage and his training, uh, right? Correct. And he said that he didn't expect that, that triage in civilian life is very different than triage in, in combat. Yes.
Um, and I'm still on this three, uh, but generally he's talking about, uh, I guess when he was in the truck, if he had his gun, he would have shot himself. He says that several times. In this three? Yeah, I, I'm at page 85, of this three. And I'm, I'm on line 22 of page 85, where he says, if I had my gun, I would have shot myself right there. Mm -hmm. You see that? Yes, sir. And then on page 87, line 19, he also says, well, I would have, I would have, if I had my gun, I would have shot myself already. Correct. And then right after that, he goes in and talks about the event with his father, where his father apparently committed suicide. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, if we go to this five, uh, on page four, and I think Agent Salinas uh, mentions to him on line six, uh, you're sleepy, and he says, a little, uh, question, you wanna go to bed? He goes, yeah. You see that? I do see that. And then if we go to page five, uh, I think it's uh, Agent Salinas. No, it's you now, it's Captain Calderon. Uh, on line six, so you say question. So we won't be, keep going, in circles here. I know that you're tired and everything, and we've got a lot of stuff to do, and we're still getting hits, you know. So you're acknowledging that he is tired, uh, correct? That's what I said there, yes. At that point in time, do you know when's the last time he slept, just generally speaking? When the last time he slept was not. Yes, you don't, you don't know. I don't. So you don't know how sleep deprived he, he is? No. Okay. And you don't know if he's taking all this eight pills uh, during that day? I have no idea. And you don't know how many tallies he's had? No. Nope. Okay. If you go, and again, well, we're still in this five, if we go to page 10. Uh, it's Agent Salinas, uh, line nine. That's when he's asking about being placed in, in isolation, correct? Correct. And then on line 17, this is Salinas saying, you're asking me to do something when you ask me for something that's uh, it's doable, but well, we're sitting here and you keep telling me that you didn't do anything. So you see how uh, like it's conditional. Uh, you, you will ask that you go to isolation, but you got to talk to us. Do you see no, that? No, I, I, don't, I don't agree with that statement. Okay. And then on, on line on page twelve, line twenty. Now this is you speaking. Uh, and again, the isolation comes up, and and then you just sit there here and tell me that that you know that's that that's not the way that shit went down. But when you're in the room and I take you somewhere, you want me to put you in isolation and for not talking to anybody who is not doing anything, and for just you know. So again, the implication is uh, he asked for something in isolation. He needs to talk. Do you see no, that? No, sir. Okay. I think you're misconstruing okay. it. Getting back to isolation, page 21. Mm -hmm. Uh, line 20. Okay. And that's where Ortiz says, I'm just, just put me in isolation and, and then question, that's not going to happen. 
that's either you or, or Salinas. And then Salinas again. It's not going to happen. It's not that easy. You, you see that? Yes, sir, I do. And you're telling him it's not going to happen because he's not talking. Not because he's not talking. If you'd like for me to explain, I can, but. No. Okay. Uh, So then if we go to page 22, uh, line 5, question, well then why would you want to be put in isolation? Answer, best interest. Of who? Answer, everyone. That's it. And so, question, well, I'm not getting much to go out, and so you're not giving me so much to go on to put you in this, you know, Again, referring to isolation. You're not giving me anything for me to go out and put you in isolation. Do you see that? I see what you're pointing out. But do you see that it's conditional? May I explain? Uh, no, I'm just asking okay. if you see that it's conditional. No, I don't. Now, at some point in, on page 28, line 24 towards the bottom, Yes, sir. Uh, I don't know what he's going through, but he says, can you go get my medicine? You see what he's asking for his medicine? I do see that, yeah. And, and did you uh, comply with his request and give him his medication? Was I in there? No, I'm just asking you if you, if you ever no. provided him any No, we didn't, I didn't give him any medication, no. That normally would not have happened at the station. Sure. Uh, and at that some point, uh, at the end of disc five, uh, you saw where uh, Mr. Ortiz starts breaking down and starts crying. You remember that? I remember that. Okay. Now, we go to disc six. N now it's 10 o'clock in the morning. So he's been there, what, seven and a half hours. Uh, he's told you he's not mentally well. Uh, he's asked for his medicine. He's requested isolation. He's told you that uh, all this medication has messed him up. He told you he's been drinking. He's told you he wants to commit suicide. Uh, was that a, you agree that all those things have been said and told to you by 10:38 in the morning? Everything that you said was said by him. Yes. Okay. So then uh, you all still insist and persist on continuing the the interrogation, correct? Correct. Okay. And now we move to uh, page 13 at 10:55. And now I'm on line uh, 17. Okay. And that's where uh, Agent Salinas says, look, look partner, everything, everything so far that you've talked about and everything that you've asked, we've accommodated you, okay? Now, half the district attorney's office, he's right here. The DA himself, okay? Or please, okay, sir. Question, and now is the time. If you want us to put in a good word for you, you need to. You see that? I saw that. Okay, and now the, the DA is Mr. Isidro Alaniz here to my left. The elected district attorney of Webb County, Texas, correct? You're correct. And uh, he's over there at at 10.30, 10.55 in the morning uh, at the substation with you all, correct? No, yeah, I'm with you, Jay, in the interview room. I'm sorry? I'm interviewing Mr. Ortiz. No, no, but you were all outside. You came in at around 10.55. You all walked into the room. Oh, okay, you well, okay. I understand what you're saying, yes. Okay, and then we've had hearings before, and uh, you know, you testified, and so, You've been interrogating Mr. Ortiz for now, uh, two, three, seven, eight, 
eight hours roughly. Okay. Um, you vice them basically, it's, you know, whether it was intentional or not, you left them alone there, uh, just mulling, anxiety, <coughs> etc. And now you come in, or, or Salinas anyway, and tells them that the elected district attorney of Webb County, the, uh, the man that has his fate in his hands, is there with you all at the substation. That, that's what Salinas told him, basically, right? Mr. Salinas told him that the district attorney was there. Okay. He didn't say the man who had his fate in his hands. Well, let me ask you. Uh, do you recall going and speaking with Mr. Alaniz yourself about the case, about Mr. Ortiz? From time to time, maybe. I'm sorry? You, after this? No, no, no. I'm talking... During. During. Okay, you all are on break uh, for, for a while before you walk in at 10.55. Okay. Okay. Salinas, and you walk in, and Salinas starts talking about it. the DA is there. Okay. And you are walking into the interrogation room. Okay. And he starts telling him that now is the time, if you want us to put in a good word. You see how if is a conditional word? I understand what you're saying. You see? Yes. Okay. And so the implication to Mr. Ortiz or to a, a person, any person sitting there, would be that you all have been outside and you've been talking to Mr. Alaniz and you're saying, if you want us to put a good word, what is the implication? Talk. It's not like any other event. It's like talk. If you want us to put in a good word with Mr. Alaniz, the man that holds his fate in his hands. Do you see that, sir? I understand what you're saying. I disagree, but I understand what you're saying. Okay. So, in this break, before you all walk in at 1055, I imagine that Mr. Alaniz was not there uh, for a resisting arrest or anything else, that he was there for this case. Tell this jury what you and Mr. Alaniz discussed prior to you walking in at 1055. On, Four on years ago, day. when I had been up for almost 30-something hours, I don't recall exactly what I discussed Okay. when I left the interview room. During the interview, it's recorded, so it's a lot easier to remember. But okay. I had been up a long time, too. And, and so you see, Captain Calderon, how it would help the jury, the judge, the lawyers, the public, to know what you did during those time periods had you properly followed procedure and written reports to put your memory to paper. Do you see that now? Reports were made. You are saying that you have no memory because you did not put your no. memory to paper, Captain Calderon. You're asking me for the exact conversation. I don't remember the exact conversations I had. But had you been writing reports, had you been writing notes, you would have wrote written down uh, 1055 or 1020, whatever the time you spoke to Mr. Lanis. I discussed this with Mr. Alanis. You see how you would have remembered today had you put your memory to paper. I don't think that's something that would have gone on a police report. You would have kept it from your reports? You would have no, hidden it? It would not have been hidden. It's not a you it's not a conversations you have with coworkers. It's not something you normally put on a police report. Captain Calderon. Yes. This is not a coworker. This is the elected district attorney of Webb County correct that makes ultimate including death penalty decisions correct of individuals yes Mr. Ortiz is there yes Sergeant Sal I mean Ranger Salinas comes in and says the elected DA is here if you want us to put a good word yes the implication is talk do you see that is no. it, that that's that, not that, clear that, to you he was not you're implying to me that he was the only person there it was not. There was a lot of people there. My bosses were there. My supervisors were there. My chiefs were there. He was not the only person there. It's not the way you're making it seem. Then why did Ranger Salinas not go in there and say, hey, Corporal Stern is here, or Deputy Stern, who testified? Why did he not say that? Why did he mention Alanis? I'm going to object to him speculating why they didn't it's talk about it. It's okay. But Ranger Salinas did not come in there and say, Deputy Stern is outside. If you want us to put in a good word with Deputy Stern, talk. He didn't mention Deputy Stern. No, he sir, mentioned he 
the elected district attorney of Webb County, did he You're not? Correct. Yes, okay. sir, he did. So the fact that, that Elizondo or Bob or Joe are in there is irrelevant. What's relevant to Mr. Ortiz from the point of overcoming his free will is that the elected district attorney is there. And if he wants you to put in a good word with him, talk. Do you not see that as clear as day, sir? No. Now, on page 14, uh, you're telling him that, you know, you've kept your promise, if you will, and you've talked to his wife, and you did what he asked you to do. You see that? Mm, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, further down on, on page 14, it's you, uh, it's you talking, and on line 20, uh, again, about, about what you've done for him and the, the good word with, with Alanis. We've gotten your picture. We, we've talked to your wife. Uh, here you're saying you're asking us for the picture of your family, and we can. Now we did. We can get you the picture of your family. We can work on that. You see how you're giving him inducements? I say I can work on it because I have to ask for permission for those things. I'd have to ask my boss, can I give him a picture of this? Can I do this? Yes. So I said I can work on it because I don't, can't do that on my own authority. But we're not talking about you. We're talking okay. about the effect that it has on a, on a suspect in overcoming his free will by offering in, inducements. You see that? I was not offering him something in order to make him do something he wouldn't ordinarily do. Well, why didn't you just tell him, I'm not going to get that picture? I had no reason to not do that. Because there is a reason to do it. You see that? No. Okay. Uh, and, and you even go further on this picture. Uh, you say, uh, they, they don't allow stuff in the jail, but I can work on trying to get permission for that dude. You see how you're Correct. going out of your way to provide inducements. Do you see that? Yes, I do. You see, okay. you're assuming I only do it for him, but I would do that for anybody who asks for something. Well, you provide inducements to suspects so they Not can talk. Not inducements. I provide, if someone asks for something, I will accommodate them. It's an accommodation. It's not an inducement. Okay. And then uh, on line eight, <coughs> you say, uh, and it's, I'm sorry, not you, Agent Salinas. And yes, again, sir. you're working in tandem, so yes, I'm not saying you. Yes, uh, Agent Salinas, and you didn't want us to break down your door, and we're not going to break down your door. We're not going to ransack your house. Uh, and, and it's, again, it's something in the future. We're not going to do that if you talk. No, it's not an if you okay. talk. It's okay. a reinforcement. We're not going to break down your door. We're not going to ransack your house. We're not going to trash your kid's room. It's not something we do. Okay. Uh, but then, because you're saying it's not inducements, on line 14 on page 15, you say a uh, question, and it's you now. Help yourself. Help us. You see? Help us, the police. Help, yes, help me. Help us out with what happened, and we'll get you the picture that you've asked for. I'm working on that right now. I have one of my guys working on it. So, help us, and then I'll do this. No. Okay. You see, do you know, you're familiar with the word, with the phrase quid pro quo? Yes. Something for something. Yes. All of this, Alanis, the picture, the wife, not ransacking the house, all of that is something for something to overcome the free will of Mr. Ortiz. I disagree. You see, you have, this is not a conversation you're having at a cafe, you uh, see that. What's your question? Well, it's not a question. Now he's getting argumentative talking about something at a cafe. Okay, well, uh, rephrase the question. Yes, yes, that's the question. I mean, you appreciate the fact that he's, he's, a, he's a captive audience. You're familiar with that term? 
Well, a captive audience is like if you're in an elevator and you can't get out and the guy next to you is arguing with his wife or something like that. You're captive. You're a captive audience to that guy. You can't get out. Okay. Okay. Just to make my point. Sure. He is a captive audience. He can't walk away from you. He has to be there and listen to you. You see that? Or terminate the interview. Well, he didn't want to do the interview in the first place. He told you no. Do you uh -huh. remember that? This is cross-examination on a capital murder case, Your Honor. Um, you say he didn't it, it, terminate the interview. He didn't even want to start it. He told you no. Do you recall that? I recall where you said that, yes. And what you all did, not you, again, I think it was Ranger Salinas, forgive me. What Ranger Salinas, and it's called a diversion tactic, he said, well, I still got to review your rights. And he went into the rights. That's by training. That's by design. That's by technique. It's not by accident. Is that true? Is that accurate, Captain Calderon? Is it true that we read people their rights? That's no, sir. You, okay. That when an individual is a starting to assert a right in any form or fashion, do I need a lawyer? Might I want to be quiet? You all utilize and employ diversion no, tactics. Sir, that's, I'm gonna you're object, wrong. I'm going to object to the mischaracterization of the evidence. There was never any evidence that he just injected that Mr. Ortiz asked for a lawyer. And he specifically gave that statement. That He's correct, Your Honor. I, I was talking about not wanting to start the interview, but I, I'll go back to okay. it. Rephrase the question. Yes, Your Honor. What I'm suggesting to you, and, 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 and you can agree or disagree. Okay. Uh, Captain, uh, Ranger Salinas comes in and says, okay, are you, are you willing, are you willing to give us a statement on what happened? Ortiz, no. Well, I still got to read your rights. Okay. It's a diversion tactic. I'm going to object to the, 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 um, he's, the question is an opinion. Sure. Uh, it's okay. a statement. It's okay. Injecting it's, his opinion, it's, it's not a direct I'll, question. I'll, I'll, I'll change it to a question. Is it a diversion tactic? No. Is it by design? I don't understand what you mean by design. If you're asking if it's a diversion tactic, no. It's, it, you know, I mean, you just, you testified earlier, you've conducted hundreds of interrogations, right? Or, or like something like that. Uh, more than I can count, yes, but you, I can't give you an exact number. You yes. have training in this. Yes, I do. Generally, nothing in an interrogation room happens by accident, right? I wouldn't generalize any investigator style. But they do teach, what, what, what do they teach you in interrogation? Do they teach you tactics? Uh, some, they yeah. do, some different right? ones, yes. And, and you utilize, you all utilize those tactics, correct? Yes. And you're even allowed, you're taught that you can allow uh, mm -hmm. a lie to citizens in order to get them to talk, right? Yes, correct. Right? Uh, and I'm so, you utilize, you and Ranger Salinas, I don't know how long Ranger Salinas has been a cop, but I know it's been a long time. So you, you all utilize this 20, 40 years of experience, uh, and you, you utilize all those tactics when you're interrogating the suspect. Is that accurate? I would say that's accurate, yes. Okay. And you did that in this case? Use my training, yes. Yes. And uh, it doesn't stop there. Then we go to uh, the retirement. Uh, we, we go to page 16, <coughs> line 23. Uh, are you there? The page, I'm sorry, I just want to make sure you're there. Page 16, line 23. Yes, sir. And uh, let me see, hold on. Well, a little bit further up, we're talking up again about the picture. Uh, and I believe now... Here it's you, Captain Calderon, on mm -hmm. uh, line 18. Uh, I'll even ask the sheriff to permission to let you take it in, the picture. This picture is very important to him. Mm -hmm. It was a picture, at some point it says it's his family on Father's Day. Do you recall that? Yes, I do recall. Okay. And you're doing everything you can to, uh, I, I guess, bending the rules even, that you're going to ask the sheriff permission for, to let him... Let, let you take it in, right? You see that? I see that. And, and, and Ortiz says, can you do that? 
Like, can you do that for me? You see that? The next, yes, I do. Okay. Uh, and then you say, the, the follow-up after he says, can you do that? You say, I can work on that. All I'm asking for is for you to do the right thing. Yes. What's the right thing? To talk. To talk. I'm going to object. That's not a question. He's, he's injecting his, his opinion. No, it, it was a question. Well, finish the, well, the statement. He, he's making an argument. He's not asking him a question. The way it was phrased, it was not a question. Okay. It was a statement. What's the right thing? To talk. Is that not correct? To take responsibility for what he did. To talk. To open his mouth. Isn't that true? To take responsibility. Well, as opposed to remaining silent. You see what I'm saying? I see what you're okay. getting at. Okay. Now, like I said, it doesn't stop there because then he starts talking about his wife's, his retirement and his wife being able to keep it. Remember? Correct. Yes. Okay. Uh, and in that situation, you say, uh, he's talking about he wants her to keep it in general. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay. And again, I think this is you, uh, Captain Calderon. Uh, I don't want to put words in your mouth. But, um, you say, I, uh, and I'm, li I'm on line four of page 17. Okay. You say, I, I, you know what? I don't know, but I can find out. You know that. That's stuff that we can work on. That's what I was trying to get out earlier. If she needs, if she needs help after this. Uh, he says, Ortiz says, I want her to keep that seriously. And then you say, and there's a way that, that, that you could help her, help us, cooperate, walk straight with us, help us a little bit, count on us. That's quid pro quo, something for something. No, sir. I asked it, for his help. Hold on. It, it's a question. Do you see that that's something for something? Captain no, Calderon? I disagree. You help us, and we'll help your wife keep the retirement. Do you I see that? I don't see it as an end. Okay. Mr. Perez, is this a good breaking point for lunch? Yeah, this, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and recess for lunch. It's a little past 1230. Uh, I'll ask the jury to be back by, by 145. <laughs> And I'll remind you not to discuss the facts of the case, not to watch any news accounts or read any newspaper articles regarding this case. Your excuse for lunch. All right, Mr. Jury. Back by one forty five.
Kids recorded back in session. The Honorable Judge Oscar Hill Jr. presiding. Ready for the jury? Bring the jury in, please. All right, the jury. You may be seated. Good afternoon. And, uh, you may, you may, you may continue, Mr. Perez. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Captain Calderon, uh, I'm not sure exactly where I left off, but I'm just gonna. I won't be. I hope I don't repeat myself too much. But it's in the tr where, where I'm on. I'm on uh, page 17. <clears throat> uh, kind of like. Oh, we're still on disc five. Page 17. Disc 6, it, I think, sir. We're disc 5. Disc 5. five. I'm sorry. Disc 6. I apologize. Uh, on page 17 on top. And then it, it starts with question. Why would you, why would she keep your retirement? Answer, because I want her to. Question. And this is you speaking, uh, Captain Calderon. Uh, <clears throat> because I want her to. I, you, you know what? I don't know, but I can find out. You know that. That's stuff that we can work on. That's what I was trying to get out earlier. If she needs, she needs help after this, answer, I want her to keep that seriously. And he's talking about the retirement. And then uh, you say, and there's a way that, that you could help her, help us cooperate. Walk straight with us. Help us out a little bit. Count on us. Isn't it true that what you're doing is you're promising to help his wife get the retirement if he, in exchange, on the condition that he cooperate. It's not conditional, no. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I think earlier it, you, you bound, they bounced back to the picture where uh, you, it's, uh, it's you again talking. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get you the stuff that you're asking for. I'm going to work on it. I'll get you the picture. Help us out. Again, conditional. If you help us out, I'll help you get the picture. Isn't it true that you're promising him uh, uh, any sort of inducement, coercement, in order for his cooperation? It is not true. Okay. Um, <clears throat> a little bit further down on page 18, uh, Line 7, uh, this is again you, Captain Calderon, J.D., come on, J.D., do you want me to find out about your, uh, what is it, unintelligible, unintelligible, but you're talking about the retirement, or what was in your, look, I'll find out, I'll ask, I'll call, I'm not going to let that happen, she still has to go on, and so do you, she's going to need help. I guess that I can call and I can ask. I can find that out for you, JD. Look at me, please. Do you see that? I do. And, and would you, again, you're promising to help her get the retirement. Do you see that? Not unconditional. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, now I'm on line 19 on page 18 again. And this is Ortiz speaking. Um, this is my this is why my wife fuck she can keep whatever little bit of money that we have and i don't want her to waste money on legal fees and um this unintelligible 
And then you, Captain Calderon, answer, okay, if you help us out, Ortiz, that's as clear as daylight that that's conditional. Isn't that true, Captain Calderon? That's not my intention. That was not my intention. Okay. What your intent is, is not the question. The question is, did it induce him? Did it coerce Mr. Ortiz? Did you overcome his free will to not want to cooperate by promising him things? No. Okay. Okay, <clears throat> I'm on page 19, line 22. Uh, this is you, Captain Calderon. You've served your country. You've continued serving your country through the U.S. Border Patrol. You're doing the right thing. Help us out right now. Help us do the right thing. Help yourself and do the right thing. And we need help and cooperate with this long weekend so that we can move forward on this. This is still you speaking. Just whatever you feel comfortable telling us. We'll go from there, but at least, please help us out with something. Help us show the DA that you're cooperating with us. Again, it's, it's if he cooperates, do you agree that then you're going to go tell the DA something? It's conditional. I disagree. Okay. Uh, now on line 19, on page 20, you, you Captain Calderon, say, J.D., do not stay like we are. Help your wife. Help us so that we can get past this. Again, in order to help his wife, you're asking him to help you. That's not what I said. Now, by this point in time, you had seen him on the monitor crying and kind of breaking down, right? I don't recall. And you said that, I'm not too sure on this occasion, but that is a technique that you all use, right? To, to break down individuals by icing them, you know, letting them sweat, if you will. Is no, no, I wouldn't call it that. Well, is, is, it, is, it, is the delay a tactic that you all utilize. Do some police, you're generalizing when you say you all, you're saying all police. Do I do that? I generally don't do that, not me. Okay. Now I'm on disc seven. Uh, I'm on page 4, uh, line 14, and this is you, uh, Captain Calderon. Uh, the prior, so that, to put it in context, prior to that, you're talking about the 40 and the 9, the, the, the pistols. Which page are we on? Uh, okay, I'm on disc 7, page 4. Got it, okay. Okay. And I'm going down to uh, line 12. Yes. But I was putting in context that earlier you're speaking with him about the 40 cal and the 9 millimeter. Okay. But at some point you say, question by Captain Calderon, is there anything else that you want to tell us? He tells you, fucking no. Okay. Now, I would imagine that you didn't take that uh, as a, I want to terminate the interview. I did not take that. Okay. No. So is that is that what you would require? I want to terminate the interview. A 
intelligent you know, I'm response. asking, is that what you would require? No, yourself? I don't require only that. Okay. If you would have said that, though, I would have stopped. Uh, and uh, you go on to say, thank you for what you're doing. Answer, all right. Question, we appreciate it a lot. Answer, uh-huh. Question, this is you speaking. And we'll let them know that you're that you're not being stubborn so again in exchange for co his cooperation you are going to put in a good word for him or something like that not necessarily no okay If I can now move to uh, to the search of the truck. Now, we know that the troopers see him at the stripes at around maybe 1255, right? On the 15th, roughly? Around there, I believe you're right, yes. Okay, and we also know that uh, the reports indicate that he's already at the, at the station on Saunders at 2.30 in the morning, correct? Around there. Okay. And um,
Your next one is four. Four? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, just to refresh your memory, I'm going to show you what's been admitted into evidence already as uh, Dependents Exhibit Number One. Can you, that's uh, the inventory form, correct? I've seen this one, yes. Okay, so just so I'll keep it here, and then. I have uh, Defendants Exhibit 4, 5, 6, and 7. Can you just tell me generally what those are? White Dodge Pickup. White Dodge Pickup. Mr. of Business Pickup. Okay, and that's out at the stripes, right? It looks like it, yeah. Okay, and does it accurately reflect the way it was back then? I didn't, well, it wasn't there. Okay. I'd like to offer them into evidence. No objections. What are the exhibit numbers, sir? Yes, Your Honor. It's four, five, six, and seven. Defense exhibits four, five, six, and seven are admitted in evidence. <laughs> okay. Now, if you review your notes, I just want to confirm mm -hmm. that the approximate time that Ortiz was uh, at the substation or no, actually arrested, was around 2.30? Around there, around there, yes. At, at the garage, right? Correct. Okay, and then it took whatever minutes to get to the station uh, on Saunders, correct? Correct. Okay, and then we had previously talked about uh, the inventory form, uh, the defendant's exhibit number one, and we can see that uh, it's already been received by Ricardo Garcia at 2.17 a.m., right? Correct. I can't verify that, but that's correct. Well, I mean, that, that's what it that's says. That's what it right? says, okay. yes. You, have any, you, you don't have any reason to doubt that, do you? I don't know. I okay. don't know the DPS form there where they get their times from. Okay. But what that seems to indicate, that before Ortiz was arrested at 2.30 in the morning in the garage, this truck was already at the substation. That's what that would indicate if the time's correct. Okay. And, and so there, therefore we know that before 2.30, if it's already at 2.17, the truck, I'm talking about the white Dodge, if it's already at the substation by 2.17, then prior to 2.17, which obviously means prior to 2.30, Mr. Ortiz being arrested, we have photos, which is four, mm -hmm. five. Yes six and seven yes sir where this truck is opened up okay and photos are being taken of it right okay i mean do you agree with that i agree with what you said with the exception of the time because i don't know how that time's populated i don't know if that's manually populated or computer populated so i don't know i can't verify that time but yes everything else you said is correct okay now very briefly at the time that this truck is being searched out at the stripes uh, uh, based object, that's a mischaracterization of the evidence he's 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 putting in that the time that the truck is being searched that hasn't been, even been established he, the, the, it's an improper question yeah. he's he's injecting evidence we, we see that the truck was photographed it wasn't searched rephrase the question well at the time it, do you know if law enforcement opened this truck or some, some homeless guy came and opened it up and took photos, or do you think it's law enforcement? I'm going to object to speculation. He hasn't even established that uh, Calderon already testified that he was not there. He's the wrong witness to be asking these questions to. Well, the question was, do you think, so rephrase the question, calls for speculation, do you think? Okay. Then. Well, let me ask you this. Here uh, on, on the driver's side door, do you see a firearm? On the, on the on the door well, the butt of a firearm? Yes. Okay, and based on your investigation, 
that's the firearm that Ugarte recovered later at the at the uh, at the at the Saunders, correct? I believe it is. Yes. Okay. But regardless, it had already been discovered by two seventeen, according to this records, uh, before even Mr. Ortiz was arrested. Objection. Speculation. He doesn't. He. he he can't answer or assuming facts not in evidence whether the gun had been discovered. It's a photograph of a gun. It doesn't mean it had been discovered. I, I didn't hear a question. It was just a more of a statement so sustained at this time. Well, in, 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 in um, Defendant's Exhibit Number 1, can, can you tell me what the title of Defendant's Exhibit Number 1 is? Texas Department of Public Safety property inventory. Okay. Can you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what an inventory search is? What an inventory search is? Yes. When you search a vehicle before you remove it from where it is. Okay. And and uh, the purpose of, a, of an inventory, if you arrest an individual uh, and you're going to seize the vehicle from where it's at, at a location, and you're going to take it to the pound or whatever to have it impounded. Okay. okay. The purpose of an inventory is to document the property that it's in there so that, you know, it goes from point A, wherever it was, to point B, that you can say, when it first left here, there was a briefcase. I'm not talking about this case. I'm just speaking hypothetically. There was a briefcase here. There was a, you know, Cheetos over there. Whatever you want to document so that when it gets over there, you know that the stuff that was here is still over there and no one stole it on the way. Is that correct? That's what... Our forms reflect. The sheriff's office forms are designed the way you're saying yes. Okay, but the concept is to document the, the property that is there mm -hmm. and then make sure it's still over there when it gets to the pound. I don't disagree with what okay. you're saying. Okay, and then in this, in this uh, defendant's exhibit number one, and it says it twice, can you read this line right here? Vehicle seized pending criminal investigation. No inventory conducted. Released to Webb County Lieutenant Ricardo Garcia. Okay, and then at the very bottom again, what does it say? Vehicle seized pending criminal investigation and stopped at the Webb County Sheriff's Office substation at 7290 Saunders Laredo. No inventory conducted, and it has a reference number and a, some sort of case number. Okay. So according to this document, no inventory was performed on this truck. According to that trooper and document, yes, correct. And yet, and yet we have photos of the truck all opened up, right? I mean, you saw them. I saw the photos, okay. yes. And, and I'll give you this. This is not a Webb County Sheriff's form, right? You're correct, yes. And so E.J. Salinas would be the one more appropriate to answer to this? I'm not familiar with their electronic forms. With ours, I am, not theirs. Okay. I've seen them, but I'm not familiar with them. Yes, sir. Now... At some point, the truck does make it out to the to the substation, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And was it there when you got there? I don't recall if it got there as I was getting there, right before, right after, but it was around the same same time frame, give or take. And 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 you didn't write a report about the time that you saw the truck or that it arrived. Uh, so that you can't refresh your memory about the arrival or I the seizure search. of this truck. I didn't search it. That was Ranger Salinas's task. No, but right now when I'm asking you questions about what time did the truck get there. Correct. Uh, you'd agree with me that had you written a report about that, you could look at it and refresh your memory and tell me, yes, at 217 it got there. If I, was in, if I was involved in that task, yes. If I wasn't, then I wouldn't have generated that on a report. Well, are you the lead investigator or are you not, Mr. For Captain the sheriff's Evans? office, I was the lead investigator okay. for the sheriff's office. And this facility where this truck arrived, it's a Webb County Sheriff's Office facility, correct? correct? Yes. Yes? Okay. Did you order the truck to be seized? No. Okay. Who else could have ordered it to be seized? The ranger was working with us, so I'm sure the the ranger was the one who coordinated the the issues with the truck. And by the ranger, you mean Texas Ranger E.J. Salinas? That is correct, sir. Okay. Um, now, uh, 
you didn't order it, the, the white Dodge Ram to be seized. Did you order it to be searched? No. Okay. Um, do you know who ordered that it be searched? Ranger Salina, sir. Okay. I'm just trying to figure okay. out because uh, we I ran a. Seen... Sorry. You know, we ran a co-investigation. He asked our employees to do stuff too, and my employees were under direction that if he needed something done, they get done. So if he would have asked them to do something, go with me here, go with me there, they would have done it. So. And, and, and do you know who ultimately searched the white Ram Dodge? Off the top of my head, no. Okay. And again, had you written, because if I were to reports tell you- Reports were written. I'm sorry? Reports were written, so. No, no, but from you, did you write a report about who ordered the truck to be searched and who searched it? I didn't write a report for something I didn't do. Okay. Uh, would it surprise you that one of your uh, employees of the Webb County Sheriff's Office is the one that searched the truck? No, I wouldn't. Okay. Um, and ultimately, we know that uh, I believe it was Ugarte who searched the truck, correct? Okay. May I approach the witness, Your Honor? Yes. Men mark defendant's exhibit number eight for identification purposes at this time. Do you recognize that form? Yes, sir. Um, and what what is that form? Just generally speaking, it's like a like a running list, a roster, uh, a log. Okay. And do you know who does it? Does it say who the author of that form is on that? No. Okay. I don't see it at least. And, and, and this evidence collection log, is it a form that you're familiar with? Not this one, but just the form itself? Yes. Is that a form that the Webb County Sheriff's Office uses? From time to time. It's not the computerized one that you would see, for example, like, I'm sure you have our computerized ones, yeah. but yeah, it's something you hand write before you type it into the system. Okay. And if I were just to ask you generally, uh, here where it reflects the, the 1HK40 caliber, mm -hmm. can you tell me the time that it was uh, logged? 354. And would that be on, on 915 of 18? That's what it says here. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So by, by 354, we know that Ugarte is already searching the truck on someone's orders, correct? Correct. And uh, in the video, uh, you also uh, enter the interrogation room with some pieces of evidence, some bags of evidence. Do you recall? I recall. They brought me some stuff. Can yes. you refresh my memory and tell me what you walked in with? Um, no, I'd have to, uh, if you show me what it was, but yes, I do remember walking in with this stuff. Well, I were to tell you that you were showing them, you're selling syringes. Okay, yes. And the purses. Okay, correct. Okay, and you'd agree with me that those are from the white Dodge Ram. You're correct. Okay. So, prior to Mr. Ortiz uh, making any incriminating statements, uh, you already possess some of the evidence from the white Dodge Ram. Correct. And based on your investigation, did, did the Webb County Sheriff's Office obtain a search warrant for the white Dodge Ram? Eventually, but not for that. Correct. Eventually, for days, something. days later, it was for all the electronics. Correct. In the, in the, You're correct, sir. You know, like the GPS and stuff like that. Yes, sir. But uh, you can also have a search warrant to search for items within the cab, let's say. Yes, right? sir. Okay, um, and a search warrant for those items was never obtained by the Webb County Sheriff's Office, correct? You're correct. And neither was it by the Texas Rangers, is that correct? You're correct. Uh, 
yet you are in possession of items from that truck, including this big tire right here, correct? Correct. Okay. that I showed you uh, may I approach the witness again your honor yes sir just briefly now on on again on I'm showing you what's been marked only for identification purposes on defendants exhibit number eight okay. uh, can you tell on the times that throughout the day it's kind of being searched, items are being uh, collected from the uh, Dodge Ram? This document hasn't been introduced into evidence. He's testifying from it. I don't, I don't, I don't even know what he's looking at. Well, I'll show you. I'll offer it to the show. I'll offer it to the show. Mm -hmm. This was not prepared by him. It's hearsay. Doesn't this is not the proper witness to be answering questions from this document? It's not the right. It's not the right witness. It's premature at this point. Go. So you want to ask some more predicate questions for the witness before you offer it? No, Your Honor. That's not about this form. I don't know where that. I think in in, uh, in Lincoln, I think. Or sustained at this time. Okay. Well, Objection sustained. Without, without showing you this form, and again, uh, do you have any reports that you made uh, that would reflect uh, who searched the truck and when and the like? Do I have one? No. Did you re prepare a report, like a, a summary, where you would say, on this date, the sergeant who got there, or whatever his rank is, search the pickup and recovered this from that you would have written yourself no okay Entered uh, the room, the, inter the interrogation room, and you had those items. Uh, wh where did you get those items? From the room across the uh, interview room. Okay, who directed you to them? Who directed me to the room? I mean, how did you know that a bag with syringes, for example? Oh, they brought them to me. Who brought them to you? It would have been Nanka Ogarte. But you don't remember because there's no report. I was interviewing Mr. Ortiz at the time. But isn't it common for officers to write notes in handwriting and then you go back and you type in and you make a, a, a summary or report? Would you like an explanation or yes or no? I'm just asking you, is it common or not? Sometimes. Okay. know uh, from personal knowledge where the search of the white Dodge Ram ultimately occurred? Substation. Okay. And uh, the substation that we're speaking of and uh, where was it parked within the substation? On the curb? Within an enclosed area? You know. Within a, not really an enclosed area, but within a limited access area. Okay. Uh, I imagine like a, a sally port, you know, to like be protected more like from the elements and the like? Carport, more like it, but okay. yes. Okay. And uh, that is Webb County uh, Sheriff's Office property, correct? Correct. And is it a secure area? Define secure. Well, could I walk in and grab something from the white Dodge Ram? From the Ram? 
Yeah, from the ramp or any vehicle that you all input in an impound. I would say no, but if you try it, I would say anyone can. Well, I might get arrested. <laughs> yeah, well, that's yeah. Kind of, and if you try, if you try no. to pass back there and go back there, I'm. I mean, sure but you, you know what I mean. It's a secure area for law enforcement. Though. Yes, it's okay. restricted to law enforcement. And so at that point, um, um, the truck's not going anywhere the minute it gets there. Okay. Do you agree with that? I agree. Okay. So nothing prevented you from going and getting a search warrant for it. Okay, I understand what you're saying. Okay. Um, and also the keys. Where did, where did the keys to the truck initially come from? I don't know. I know I received them at the substation while I was inside. I received them from one of the officers and I gave them to either Wagafka or Nenka and they put them in their office. I do, I do know that, but I don't know where they came from. I'm assuming the record driver, but that's an assumption. Okay. Um, and so, the, just generally speaking, the, the chain as far as the keys, who got them from where and where did they go from there and to whom they went, you, you yourself right now don't know that chain other than you got them from somebody and you gave them to Ugarte or Nenke even? Or do you know who you gave them to? I received them from the deputies there, or the after the record dropped it off, they gave me the key. I was inside, and I gave it to Nenker I don't remember which one of them, but I gave it to one of them, and they put it in their office. Okay. And then when, when you got those items uh, from that room that you say, uh, do you remember who gave them to you, those items from the, from the White Dodge Ram that you no. took into the interrogation room? I don't. Who, who, who led you to them? I believe Ranger Salinas told me what was there, and that's where I went out to check it out in the room. Okay. When Tell me if I'm generally correct. When, when evidence is collected by a law enforcement officer, uh, and you're familiar with the phrase chain of custody. Correct. Okay. So we're trying to establish a, the, the, the phrase, the legal phrase uh, for, for the admission of evidence uh, in collection of evidence is it, it was, it, it was uh, taken into possession by person one. Person one either put it here or gave it to person two. Person three came and picked it up and took it to person four at the lab. And we're trying to establish so that we establish a direct chain of, of everyone that had it, right? Is that is that proper police procedure? You're correct. Okay. Now, we know that uh, either Ugarte or Nenke, because those are the only two people that, that are in the property room that could search the truck, right? That would have been assigned that duty, yes. And you previously stated that E.J. Salinas uh, ordered the search of the truck on that day without a search warrant. He was involved that. in the search. Yes, sir. Now, uh, Ugarte is responsible for the property, and is there a property room physically that Ugarte would grab this item from the truck and take it to the property room so it'd be secure? We have a property room. Okay, but that would, would that be proper police procedure? He collects it because there's an ev we know there's a collect uh, an evidence log collection, right? Correct. Okay, so he, de time, he dates the time that he got it, and the chain would say, I now put it in the property room, correct? Normally when you're done with the property, when you're done inspecting it or looking at it, you go put it away, yes? Okay, do you know if by the time you grab those pieces of evidence that you had in the interrogation room, did Ugarte already log him into the property room? I wouldn't be able to answer that. Okay. Do you, well, let me ask you this. Do you even know who placed him on that table that you say E.J. Salinas directed you to in that room? I don't know. I'm assuming it would have been Nenke or Ugarte once again. Oh, but you're assuming, right? Correct. So no. It could have been the ranger for all I know. Sure. So now now we have a chain that we have Ugarte or Nenke, we're not sure who, and then we don't know how it got into the room, either Ugarte or Nenke, and, or this ranger, and then to you. And then what did you do with them when you left? 
I gave them back to the property tax. Well, you say you, you didn't give them back to a property tax because you didn't get them from a property tax. You see what I'm saying? I gave them to the property tax. Okay. Who, who is the property tech? Nenke or Ogata, whoever was there. Okay. I pass the witness, Your Honor. Thank you. Captain Calderon, under the questioning of uh, Mr. Pettis, you were explaining, and, and please explain to the jury, what your format is in referencing the, the Texas Rangers report. Correct. On my report from our records management. I labeled it as a supplementary report to the Texas Ranger report. I wasn't the original documentarian for the investigation. We agreed that that would be Ranger Salinas. So even though all of our evidence techs and everyone did their stuff, that gets added to the records management system. I did my supplement, but the Ranger was a main documentarian for the investigation. That's a big word I haven't heard before, documentary. What, what do you explain that to them? Documents, uh, much like the Mr. Pettis was saying, we went here this day, we went there that day, and I'm pretty sure if you read the report, I'll be in there. So Calderon and Calderon and Salinas this, Calderon and Salinas that. So, so your two, two or three page report as co-investigator in this case makes reference to the documentarian's report, in this case, that role belonged to E.J. Salinas. You're correct, sir. Okay, let me approach. I'm going to show you what I marked as states. Exhibits 145, 146, and 147. Have you seen these before? Yes, I have. Where have you seen them? Before? Yes, I have. Where have you seen them at? I have a copy of myself, and I've seen them with the Ranger, and I've seen them at your office. And all the details of the reports are in these binders. Correct. And they coincide with your report. Correct. Okay. What, what did you label those, Mr. Uh, just for identification, 145, 146, and 147. You already have those exhibits labeled at you. You have those numbers already? Yes, sir. 145, um, yes, that was an envelope that had the three casings. And then 146 has not been admitted, but was offered. It was an ME report. And 147, I think, might have been also. So we're at... So 150 is the last one that's been admitted, correct? So you want to change those numbers? We'll relabel them again, Your Honor, for identification purposes. So for a correction on the record, 
what I showed you now labeled 151, 152, and 153 are the Texas Department of Public Safety investigation reports in this case, correct? You're correct, sir. And they encompass what you did in this case as well? Yes, sir. Okay. They're not being offered. I just want them to identify. Just, just to, them. Just to yeah, be clear on the record. Question. Thank you. Okay. And for the record, uh, Mr. Bettis and Fuchs do have th those complete reports uh, were tendered to them, Your Honor. Uh, so I want to break up your, your questions into the same format that Mr. Pettis was asking you first. We're going to talk about the voluntariness issue that he asked you about, right? So I want to direct your attention to DISC. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, on line 20, if you could read what it says there out loud. I ask a question and the response is, I don't recall anything to tell you the truth. I don't remember being there. Okay. And that was regarding the Murphys. Correct. Being at the Murphys, right? On, on disc one, page uh, 76, line 12, you ask him, it wasn't the first time that you met her. It wasn't the first time that you talked to her because I guess this time the thing is a little bit different. What happened? What was his response? I have no idea what you're talking about. I didn't even know I was in Arkansas. So that's news to me right there. That he didn't know he was on Arkansas Street. That's what he told you. Correct. We go to disc two, page three. On page, on line 14, you ask him, okay, so as far as buying the beer at Arkansas, uh, and you ask him, uh, and you bought him three, you said, and uh, that's not the problem, uh, the three tallies that were there okay and what's his response line 15 line 15 so as far as buying beer at Arkansas it is I don't know what the hell you're talking about and you go to page 4 below that so I mean what I'm trying to tell you is uh, I want to know what happened today about that you keep telling me that we should know something and we already know that you're lying. You know why you're here. You know why you're here and we'll get to that. But before that, what happened with the young lady earlier? Your Honor, if I may. We object that what the prosecutor is doing right now is not rebuttal. It's another direct. It's repetitive. The best evidence is already in, which is the video. And he had the opportunity on direct to ask from the transcript as far as what was going to be presented in the video. And so this is repetitive and it's not rebuttal to my cross. It's, to it's, have him repeat only things that do not go to anything is not proper uh, rebuttal uh, right now, Your Honor. He opened the door when he asked him if there was no reason to believe if his medical condition, uh, and, and he opened the door regarding blackouts, his memory, this goes to state of mind court would, uh, would allow me to uh, to explore this will obviously these these lines of questioning early in the interview later on in, in the in the same interview it's developed that these statements go to the fact that he did in fact uh, 
I'll, I'll, let me make a ruling. I'll, I'll overrule the objection at this time. I'll allow a little leeway in that. Um, Thank you, Your Honor. You, you may proceed. So, on page 4, line 22, what does he state? I have no idea what young lady you're talking about. On page five, line seven, you ask what high school, or you say, uh, uh, hold on. back up to page four, you say you don't, you don't remember Erica, and then on page five at the top, I have no idea who you're talking about. Then you say you have no idea who Erica is. Response is no. The only Erica I know is Erica Castro, and she's from high school. What high school does he answer? Gladys Porter High School. Let's go to page 11. Line 10. What do you, you ask him, when was the last time that you were ever over there on the toll road? And you're referring to toll road 255, correct? Correct. And what is his response on line 16? What page are we on? Page 11, line 16. I haven't been on the toll road since probably when I was in the targeted enforcement unit. I had to fucking go out. I believe it's the Jaime toll road. Then let's go to page 18. You say, or let me ask you, during your interview and, and his education came up, Juan David Ortiz, if you know, and if he told you what his bachelor's degree is in what area? Criminal justice, I believe. Correct. So he has a bachelor's in criminal justice. On line 19, on page 19, it starts on page 18 with you saying, so, so if there's somebody out there saying, I know him and everything, on 21 answer, he laughs, 22 you say no, and he says, look at this right now, okay, well, some of the people that we've talked to, civilians, they don't necessarily lie for you. And what's his response on line four? Well, I have no idea what you guys are talking about right now. On line 21, you say, very well, and the one tonight, referring to Erica? That, I don't know jack shit about it. Right now, you guys are freaking me out about this stuff. On page 21, when asked, hmm, so you know she hesitantly went with you. She went in the truck with you, and you also did drugs. You all went by Arkansas. And on line 20, what is the answer? Where? Question mark. Where did this person jump in my truck? And on page 24, you ask him, she took them. She said that you all sat down, went to the backyard, and had a smoke. She was feeling kind of funny. She told us that she was feeling funny because of the way that you were acting. And his answer on line 11? What the fuck? Question mark. On page 26. Starts on page 25, line 22. You say, so, you see, the bottom line, I think that pretty much, hmm, that was part of your reactions today, but she'd noticed that you weren't yourself. Hmm, probably she noticed because she said that you picked her up enough times to know that you were cool. She actually said you were a little amiss on your own, but that she was cool with that. Yeah, a little bit. 
And on line 26, page 26, line 9, what's his response? I have no idea who you guys are talking about. On page 32, And it starts on 31 when you when you say you, you line 16 you were getting irritated and that's when she was saying that he, that he wasn't himself he wasn't the person who picked me up the first few times the person who had picked me up before you started shrugging your shoulders before his response when when have I picked her up question mark and you say on San Bernardo and his response when and, and you say when and his response, line one, page 32. Uh huh. And Agent Salina says, more than five or less than six times. And what's his response? Ha ha. I would have remembered that shit. There's no way in hell I'd pick up someone five times and not remember. Okay, so. All of those questions, and they're riddled all through the discs, through the entire interview, on page 56. Disc 6. On top of page 56. Which disc, I'm sorry? We're still on, on this. I'm sorry. This two. This two. Looking at it backwards. This this two. We're still at the beginning of the interview. This two. Page fifty five. Question, line ten. Why at the gas station on San Bernardo if you live? I don't know. Question, page fifty six, line one. I'm telling you where you were. His response? I have no idea. What did all those questions have in common, Captain Calderon? They were alive. Okay, and what was the subject matter of all those questions? His whereabouts earlier that day, where he was, who he was with. Okay. And how do you know they were all lies? Because he told us otherwise. And when did he tell you otherwise? Uh, later on in the disc, I mean later on in the interview. And we've all been here for the past week and we all have heard the, and seen the video. And it's in disc six and seven where he himself reveals that there were never any blackouts. Is that correct? That is correct. And that everything he told you regarding the facts and circumstances surrounding the crime were all lies. Objection Correct. Did he have any trouble recalling normal facts, normal uh, circumstances that did not involve criminal activity? Objection. Or, okay, I'll rephrase. 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 Did he? Uh, were there any areas? Were there any areas that he ha that he did not have trouble with, with memory recollection? Going to Pizza Hut, mowing his lawn, uh, being at the house, uh, stuff like that. Just mundane stuff he remembered? Mundane things he remembered. Uh, what about medical appointments? Remembered the 40 medical appointments. What about medications? Remembered his medications, yes sir. Mm -hmm. And who brought up blackouts? Ranger Salinas. At the very beginning, correct? Correct. What about the work schedule? Did he have any trouble with memory recollection of his work schedule? He did not. He knew the days he was on, the days he was off? Explain, yes. explain to the jury. But he told us that he worked the day before, Labor Day, and the day after, and that he was home on certain days. With regard to 
let's let's move into another area now regarding um, this voluntariness or this inducement and we've covered this uh, it was covered by mr. Perez again did either you or EJ Salinas in your presence offer him any dismissals if he told you or admitted I'm going to object to relevance, Your Honor. Uh, the law doesn't talk about dismissals or anything. It, call, it talks about promises, inducement, coercion. It doesn't have to be anything specific. So that question in particular about did you offer him dismissal, dismissals is irrelevant. Well, no, no. I disagree with him, Your Honor. He opened the door and he gave many examples of uh, and in and, and going to great lengths to to, to explain and question. Well, Your Honor, on, Your Honor. On, on, if I can finish. No, on the, uh, approach the bench and not have arguments in front of the jury during the trial. He asked about inducement. Rephrase I'm the not question. arguing. Okay. Rephrase the question, please. Okay. Yeah. Uh, did you make any promises for leniency if he would admit to any crime? Absolutely not. Did Mr. E.J. Salinas, Texas Ranger, make any promises for leniency? Again, Your Honor, that's not a requirement under the law with regards to voluntariness. It can be any that's inducement, any coercion, anything that would overcome an individual's free will. I'm sorry? Sustained. Okay. So that's the previous question. Were there, did either you or E.J. Salinas, and, and let's, let, let me back up a little bit. What is the... What is your intent or your your approach? You guys said you all met and, and, and came up with a plan to go in there. Uh, what is one of the goals that you want to do when you walk in with a suspect? Make them feel at ease, make them comfortable. To make them comfortable. And, the, and, and, and what is that called? Establishing what? Rapport. So you're establishing rapport with him. Correct. correct? Yes, sir. And ultimately, Captain, what, what are you seeking from any suspect that you question cooperation okay we're seeking cooperation what else are you looking for the truth the truth we're looking for the truth yes sir and in your training and experience was Juan David Ortiz telling you the truth not in the beginning how did you know that he was not telling you the truth because he told us the truth later on. Okay, but at that time when you start interviewing him and he starts giving you responses, what are you armed with? What do you have? And when you're testing his credibility, tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what, what you possess in order to check his veracity on the responses he's giving you. We knew he had been with Erica and we knew the situation with Erica and he claimed not to know who Erica was and. We knew that wasn't true. Exactly. And how did you know all of this about Erica? Because we interviewed her, we debriefed her, and she gave us information. Because you had Erica. We had Erica there at the station, yes. And the facts that she gave you, he lied about. Correct. Were there any inducements that you or Mr. E.J. Salinas gave to Juan David Ortiz? No. Were there any guarantees that you gave to Juan David Ortiz? There were no guarantees. Now, did you coerce Juan David Ortiz? Absolutely not. Did you threaten Juan David Ortiz? At no time. Did you intimidate Juan David Ortiz? No, sir. Did you pressure Juan David Ortiz? No, sir. Did you give him water? Yes, I did. Did you give him bathroom ba breaks? Yes, I did. How many bathroom breaks did we see here over the past 10 hours of video we've seen? A few, three, maybe three plus. Did you feed Juan David Ortiz? I did. At any time, did Juan David Ortiz explicitly ask you for an attorney? He did not. And this, at this time, what is your understanding on what his employment is? 
At that time, he's employed by the United States Border Patrol. He is a law enforcement officer. Correct. He even tells you about operations that he's worked, correct? Correct. Arrests that he's made, correct? Correct. Chases that he's been on. We're going to have a check meeting. Tell us then. Tell, tell us what he tells you regarding his law enforcement activities. Tell the jury. Well, he talked about the Stone Garden unit, Stone Garden the grant, um, and how he would tell him about the different crack houses and that he would take down loads in different places. And the last time he was somewhere was when he worked for the targeted enforcement unit. So he talked about his Border Patrol background, his so, police background. Correct. So he should be familiar with his Miranda rights, correct? I would think so, yes. And his constitutional rights, correct? Yes, sir. Let's move into the vehicle. Let's go back to the beginning. At what time is he spotted at the stripes? That night after the bolo. Around twelve fifty seven one AM okay. more or less. And who is and who is he? Who does he make contact with? Two Texas DPS troopers. Two uniformed officers. Correct. And you've seen their body cam video, correct? Correct. That identified themselves. Correct. And told him and gave him specific orders, correct? Yes, sir. What did he do at that time? He ran. He ran from who? He ran from the police. Okay. And what about his vehicle? He left it behind. And what is that called? Abandonment. I'm going, I'm going to object. That's a legal conclusion. It's a legal principle. And this officer is not qualified to answer. No, it's not. It's a fact question. Just rephrase the question. Okay. I know what you asked. I said, what do you call it when you leave a vehicle behind? That's my question. What is it called? Now what? you're asking it differently. That's what, that's, go ahead. Okay. Ask it the way you just asked it. What is it called when rephrase you run? It. Rephrase it. Okay. What, what happened when... What if anything happened when the law enforcement officers confronted Juan David Ortiz in front of the stripes? He abandoned his vehicle and he ran toward the Ava Hotel where he hid until he was captured. Okay. Did he ever come back to his vehicle? No, sir. In fact, he was arrested at the Ava Hotel. Correct. And running away from the police officers in that instance, what resulted from that? He was apprehended. He was arrested for that. And what is what type of offense is that in the state of Texas? Evading arrest. Evading arrest. So when he disobeyed the officers and ran away <coughs> from them and from his vehicle, he was evading arrest, correct? Yes, sir. The vehicle is obviously found before Ortiz, correct? The vehicle was found before Ortiz. Correct, he right? was inside the gas station. Uh, and based on the timeline that he, that, that Mr. Perez went over with you, uh, you, he showed you some photos that were taken of the exterior or with the doors open. Yes, sir. Explain to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what what in in your line of work what type of photos were those a uh, photo so object, your honor, the state objected that he had lacked personal knowledge he said he wasn't there so he lacks personal knowledge to answer that question well he introduced the where are the photos you 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 oh i think you object they were they not come in. I'm not sure no. you, which ones are you referring to i'm sorry which photo which exhibits were you referring to no i i objected to the to the to the inventory form not, not the question, not the exhibits. Uh, which exhibits are there that you say that were because there's exhibits, defense exhibits four, five, six, and seven are admitted into evidence. I know you out of your investigation that you said EJ signed enough to be photos, right? I believe it was him. It was not me. Yeah.
This is Defendant's Exhibit 7. For four, five, six, and seven. Okay. <laughs> now, where where we've already established through his questions, where was this vehicle searched? It was searched at the substation. Correct. So these photographs that were taken there, how would you describe these, uh, categorize these photographs? May I give an explanation? Sure. I would take photographs like that to show the condition of the vehicle before it left the scene and also to show what was inside before we get to where we're going. Preservation photos? To preserve how it was at that location before it gets to the final destination. Context photos? I don't know what other terms you could think of, but they're bird's eye photos? Yes, I mean, preservation would be the what? preservation of the way it looked at the scene. Okay. And to show any damage or lack of damage. So going to Mr. Pettis's questions and going into the chain of things that went on that day, what is happening here? It looks like they're taking pictures to show the condition of the vehicle all around. And what are and they doing to the vehicle in this picture? It. They're towing it, right? And where are they towing it to? Substation. So that over there it could be what? Searched. Exactly. <laughs> now, you can turn that off. Finally, he was talking to you about the keys to the truck. Do you remember, you've, you've seen the video, or you were actually there, right, when uh, Ortiz was taken down at the Ava Hotel? I was there. Okay. There were some keys taken out of his pocket, correct? Correct. And they were placed on the tailgate. Okay. Along with... Uh, cigarettes, some lighters. Personal yeah. effects, yes. Right. And his belt, right? Yes. Were those keys the truck keys? Were those keys the truck keys? I don't believe they were. Okay. What kind of keys were they? Like um, house keys and ranch keys, like they looked like personal keys and some of the ones he had from work. So when, 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 when we have, we've all seen the video and they're patting and grabbing his his pockets and emptying everything and putting it there on the tailgate and it's in evidence there at no moment and he's just run from the from the stripes right yes and he's and he's hiding in the back of a GMC pickup black pickup truck right correct and he's waiting for law enforcement get to leading, Your Honor. Oh. and he's waiting for law enforcement Correct. To come and find him. That's what he said, yes, sir. The keys to his truck are not with him. I didn't see him there, no, sir. If you know 
when the truck was found at the stripes okay. was his truck locked I you... don't know I don't know you don't know okay no further questions John Captain Calderon um, with regards to the truck number one you don't know if the truck was locked or not right I don't okay and did you testify earlier that someone gave you the truck keys at the substation and who gave them to you Asked an answer, he's already said he didn't know. That's been asked and answered multiple times. No. I don't know. Somebody there, one of the deputies, like record gave it to the record driver, gave it to somebody there. Somebody walked into the office where I was in the back, gave it to me. I gave him to a guy after a nick. Okay. Yeah. Uh, out of curiosity, how do you know that the record driver had the keys? Uh, I'm not. Go ahead. I mean, are you guessing? How, you guessing? said the record driver gave the keys to somebody. How do you know that the record driver had the keys? How do I know the record driver had the keys? Yes, sir. If you do, and if you don't, that's okay. I'm. It got there at the same time as the vehicle. Say, they say gave them, one more time. They gave them to me at around the same time the vehicle got there. Okay, but I mean the truck could have come to the station, and a deputy could have driven with the keys to the station separately, right? I mean. Is that is is that beyond comprehension? It's not, but it wouldn't be common. A deputy shouldn't be handling stuff. It's not in a case that's involving their stuff. Okay. A, a normal deputy wouldn't be grabbing things that don't belong to their case. And, and so, so, so that's an issue. We don't have a report on the chain of this keys that you know of, right? Okay. Is Here's that the, accurate? There is no report on the chain of this keys. Of the keys. Uh, on the chain of custody of the keys. Keep, but we normally don't track keys. No, you're right. Yes. No, there's no. Report on the keys. Okay. We track vehicles, not keys. So, I mean, someone has to say how you got into the truck. Don't you think that's important? I wasn't Isn't there. that important how you get into a private vehicle, Captain Calderon? I wasn't there. I'm sorry? I wasn't at the vehicle. Um, the, the truck was legally parked. Did I already ask you that? Was it legally parked? Was it legally parked? Yeah. I'm assuming it was. Okay. Um, with, with regards to um, Mr. Balanis asked you, wh what did you know when you were initially questioning uh, Mr. Ortiz, right? He, he asked you, what did you know at the time when he was answering questions initially? Do you recall that? Correct. Okay. And, and But the question on voluntariness is, what did you do to gain cooperation? Do you, you, you see the difference? What did you have to do to gain cooperation as a law enforcement officer? Do you see the difference between the two? I'm, I'm going to check, John, or now he's going back to what he originally asked across. This has all been covered. This has all been asked and answered. It's, it's repetitive. Asked and answered. Replying to his uh, question on what did he know. Going round and round, Your Honor. Just I'll allow you to rephrase it. I'll allow you to rephrase it. No, no sidebar from either side, please. Now, we already went over, like you said, all the supposed inducements that you, uh, you, he asked you, for example, did you promise him a dismissal, leniency, and all that, uh, but that's not the issue. Uh, it's, again, I'm going to object to this line of questioning because he actually objected to those questions. Today, okay, so, now, when you said earlier that he asked you, did you feed him, did you feed Mr. Ortiz, you answered yes, right? Yes, sir. But the reality is that for this nine, ten hours or whatever number of hours, you gave him a bag of potato chips, you gave him water, and after you got him to talk, then you gave him a water burger. Is that yeah. accurate? That's accurate. Okay. No further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Can you can you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what a fob is? A fob? Yeah. Like a key fob? Yes. Um like the alarm the alarm part of your car that you open your car with or depending on what kind of car you have okay and and how do those key fobs work as far as uh, if it's a keyless ones they just have to be in the car and it turns on the car you can have it in your pocket even or near the dash and if it's a keyed one obviously you turn on the car with your key okay 
Was Mr. Ortiz, when confronted by the troopers in this case, did he go and stand by his truck and say, how can I help you? Lack of personal yeah. knowledge. And you're saying? Rephrase. Speculation. Rephrase. Based on the investigation. It's still lack of personal knowledge, speculation, and hearsay. So we have at this time. If you know, if you know. No, it's still lack of personal knowledge, Your Honor. He's relying on hearsay for that. It's the same still. If you know, well, can, let me finish my question. Okay. If you know, would the vehicle have been able to be opened if the fob was not near the vehicle? If it, probably not, no. Okay. No further questions. I have a uh, no further question. Any, anything further on Croft? Mike, Mike. Because uh, Mr. Alamis brought it about brought up the fob. Are you aware that this truck did not have a fob? Are I you even aware of that? The truck. I'm sorry? I haven't gone into the truck. No, but he asked you. Mm -hmm. I was asking the characteristics. Well, I'm, I don't want, I don't want to speak. Either object or, or, or don't give a speech. He, he, well he's mischaracterizing. He, he, he asked you if a, if a Mr. Ortiz or whatever had a fob, would it be able to open the truck? And you yeah. said probably. Yes. And you're guessing. If it had the fob, yes, it can open the truck. So we're going to go, if it had a fob, it had, they've had, the keys had been there, if this. Are you aware that the truck didn't even have a fob? Are you even aware of that, Captain Calderon? I wasn't there, sir. None of the states going to uh, uh, recall Noe Gonzalez, SWAT member. Yeah, I need the property to be brought. You just need a minute to bring up the property, Your Honor. Because he, he the, uh, if the court can recall, Noe is one of the arresting officers. He's already testified. Yes, so we just have to bring up the property. Captain Calderon, released from the rule. Any objection to releasing him, Mr. Perez? I don't think so, Your Honor. Sorry. We may want to call him back. We, we may recall him. All right. So then he's not excused at this time. Okay. Or released. But he can leave. Oh, today. Yes. He's excused for now. Mr. Gonzalez, you can, uh, Investigator Gonzalez, you can come forward. Yes. You under the same oath you took previously? You can take the witness stand, please. Castillo's outside, Your Honor, the, the, the custodian.
information. We're probably going to go another 30 minutes, and then we're going to reset for the day. So, so we're not we're not taking a break just now. But to see you all. Okay. Just for the court reporter, can, can you hear me, Chester? No, I nope. need to turn uh, on your. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, perfect. What's your uh, name for the record? Yes, Your Honor, Rogelio Soto, on behalf of the state, just for the record. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> Investigator Noe Gonzalez, um, you previously testified that you were involved in the uh, apprehension of Mr. Juan David Ortiz, correct? Yes. And that was on September 15th of 2018? Correct. Okay, now I want to go back to that night. Can you please explain to us um, what you did as you approached the Ava Hotel? Which part? Whenever we clear the first building, or once we uh, yes, as you as, as you made your way up the Ava Hotel um, when you were clearing the parking garage. Okay, so yeah, we uh, stacked up at that point. Our SWAT commander had advised us to stack up uh, two stacks. We're making it up uh, first floor, nothing. Second floor, we couldn't find anything. Third floor as well. Once we approached to the fourth floor, that's when we, we came into the part where we saw the last vehicle. We had several pillars left, which we didn't know if he was behind those pillars or if he was by the vehicle. I had pointed out to the left to one uh, to the last vehicle. Uh, at that point, the last, uh, I believe the last two SWAT members from the stack broke off, and that's when they approached uh, the vehicle and observed Mr. Ortiz in the, in the back of the truck. That's when we all closed in and pulled them out of the truck. Okay, now, if you could please describe, what was the parking garage like? Uh, it was well lit. Uh, I believe the southbound, or I can't recall, it was, I think it was the southbound of the building was covered. The east and west was open, uh, to include, I believe, the north uh, side. But it was three sides open, cleared, and uh, well lit. Uh, it was now, there was no much... Uh, uh, nothing covering. I mean, you could see all the way to the horizon. 
Okay. Now, um, when you observed this, was there any blockings or anything like that uh, no. in the garage area? No. No? I think only one part of the hotel was. So, it's safe to say that if somebody wanted to try and uh, get out through the parking garage or jump or climb down, that could have been done? Correct. Okay. Uh, permission to approach, Your Honor? Now, Investigator Gonzalez, I'm showing you what's been previously marked as State's Exhibit 43. Do you recognize this? Yes. Uh, when and where was this item recovered? At the parking lot of the Able Hotel. Who recovered this item? That was me. Or who recovered these items? I, I put most of those items inside the bag. Uh, I had possession of the bag, I uh, believe all the way to the substation, and then from there I passed it on. Okay. Um, now, how, how are you, f I'm sorry, I know you already said it, but could you just state for the jury, how are you familiar with these items? Yeah, so this is the items that we recovered from Mr. Ortiz at the location where we, uh, where we detained him, uh, to include some boots, and I believe the last item that went into this bag was a box of cigarettes that were on the floor that Mr. Ortiz had, uh, requested. Okay. Now, um, have these items, uh, been altered or changed since you... I, since you took possession of them? No. 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 Once they went into the bag, I did not touch them. Okay. Oh. And you said that you took them with you? Yes. Where did you take them? To the substation. And when you arrived to the substation, what did you do then? I believe, I, from my recollection, I passed it on to to one of the supervisors, and then from there on, I'm assuming it went to, into evidence, but I cannot recall no. okay. exactly. For the record, what's the exhibit? This is State's Exhibit 43, Your Honor. Okay. Can you just give me a second? Yeah. And just for clarification with the court, has just for clarification with the court, Your Honor, forty-three has previously been admitted by the court. No, okay. It, uh, it was uh, identified, okay, along with a lot of other exhibits, but it was not offered. Has not been offered yet, and not, not admitted. All right, Your Honor. Um, so you've established that you took custody of these items, you placed them in the bag, and you're familiar with them because these were the items that were taken that night from Juan Diego Ortiz. Correct. Yeah, at this time, let the record reflect on tendering to defense what will be marked as State's Exhibit 43. We still have to go and see where they went, and then at some point they would become relevant. And so we object to relevance at this point and chain of custody. Yeah, Your Honor, these items were identified with uh, with Investigator Nenke, Your Honor, and Mr. Noy Gonzalez is a sponsoring witness because he's the one who took custody of them at the crime scene. Okay. Uh, objections noted. Objection uh, overruled. Exhibit 43 will be admitted into evidence at this time for the jury's consideration. You. Mr. Gonzalez, I'm now going to open what's been marked as State's Exhibit 43. I'm going to show you a set of keys. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you recognize this item? Not really. Oh, well. I, I remember he had keys at the moment, but I just don't recall how their keys exactly looked. I just remember there was keys at the location. Okay, but you, but you can say that 
these were the items that were taken from his person yes. that night. Yes, I remember there was uh, several items to include a set of keys, okay. which those were possibly the keys that were in Mr. Ortiz's uh, possession. Okay, now, and you just testified these items have not been altered, they have not been no. changed. These were the exact items that you handed over correct. to the um, to the sheriff's department at the sub sheriff's substation department, correct? correct? Yes. So these are the keys that were at the apprehension for Juan David Ortiz. Yes. Okay. And how do you know that? Because I took the keys from uh, from the location that we were at and put everything inside the bag. Okay. And when and where were they recovered? From Mr. Ortiz's uh, body whenever we arrested him. And they're in a similar or similar situa situated situation as they were that night. Correct. All right, Your Honor. Your Honor, I'm going to mark these as State's Exhibit 154. I'm going to tender them. Let's look for a flag on tendering them to the Feds Council. Exhibit 43K. Now, Mr. Gonzalez, I removed what's been marked as 43A, State's Exhibit 43A for identification purposes. Um, do you see any other set of keys in here? No. Um, are there any devices that look like they could be linked to a vehicle? No. Any devices that look like they could be linked to a Dodge vehicle? No. If anything, what do you see in, in this bag? I see a belt, a box of cigarettes, and uh, two lighters. Thank you. And just for clarification, these and only these things were recovered that night from the defendant, Juan David Ortiz. Correct. Uh, and a set of boots. And a set of boots. Thank you. Again, just for clarification, these this set of keys does not contain a key to a vehicle. No. Okay. Thank you. Pass away, Mr. Hunt. No questions, yes, Your Honor. You may step down, sir. You want to approach? Yes.
Perfect. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we're going to go ahead and recess for the day. Uh, and I'll just remind you not to discuss the past case with anyone, and not to watch any news accounts or read any newspaper articles regarding this case. I know there's a lot of coverage out there, so uh, uh, please follow my instructions. Okay? And uh, you'll be excused, and I'll ask you to be back on Monday morning by uh, 8, 8.30 on Monday morning. It's, uh, for the record, it's December 5th, right? To the 2nd. So we'll see you then. Thank you. All right, for the jury. Off the record, but Mr. Peterson, uh, Mr. Anis, yes, off the record.